तो पेपर होंगे किसी के ये लिहाजा विद पैसेज ऑफ टाइम इनको ये चाहिए कि एक साल में दो से तीन इवेंट्स होने चाहिए ताकि अवेयरनेस हो सके लोगों में हाँ जी अभी तक तो हमने ग्लोबल ये जो कर रहे हैं अपना प्रोजेक्ट ये ग्लोबल किया है इन आगे अगर अल्लाह ताला ने हिम्मत दी और कुछ यानी कि नज़र आ रहा हुआ हमें कि ये ज़रूरत है तो हम करेंगे पाकिस्तान में आ, मैं आ, मेरा प्रोजेक्ट का नाम है एस एम एस बेस्ड ऑफलाइन सर्च इंजन और मैं अपने प्रोजेक्ट को आगे लेके कर चलूँगा उसको और इन्हेंस करूँगा ताकि फ्यूचर में ये मेरा प्रोडक्ट आगे लॉन्च हो सके मार्केट में और हम इस प्रोजेक्ट को ये प्लेटफॉर्म स्टूडेंट के लिए बहुत बेहतर है क्योंकि हम इस प्लेटफॉर्म के थ्रू अपने प्रोजेक्ट को आगे इन्हेंस कर सकते हैं मार्केट में ले सकते हैं और आगे अपने प्रोजेक्ट को लेकर चल सकते हैं और स्टूडेंट के लिए ये एक ऐसा प्लेटफॉर्म है जो कि अपना प्रोजेक्ट को शो कर सकते हैं मार्केट लेवल पर हाई लेवल पर जी एच एस काफ़ी अच्छा काम कर रहा है इस मामले में काफ़ी स्टूडेंट को मतलब के रजिस्ट्रेशन के थ्रू काफ़ी आगे लेके जा रहा है स्टूडेंट को अपनी इनोवेशन के थ्रू इनोवेशन सेंटर बनाए उन्होंने यूनिवर्सिटी में काफ़ी सारे तो वो काफ़ी अच्छा काम कर रहे हैं इसमें ये फ्रीकुनली होने चाहिए हर साल हर होने चाहिए इवेंट Yeah, my name is Mohammad Awais Khan, and I am uh, from Shalom Hutting University. And my project is uh, an Android. It's about Android development. So the project, uh, the project is about uh, the, this project. Has some features like uh, if you are in driving, uh, sleeping, or in masjid, or uh, some sort of uh, a meeting. Yeah. So, उसके साथ आप ऐसा कर सकते हैं कि, for example, आप मस्जिद के अंदर जाना चाहते हैं, तो आपने मस्जिद पे just click किया. तो आपका जो मोबाइल फ़ोन है उसकी सारी जो वॉल्यूम है वो ऑटोमेटिकली म्यूट हो जाएंगे कोई वाइब्रेशन नहीं एंड A, B, and C. Right now, we are standing in Courtyard A, the picture-perfect spot of our campus. And I'll be showing you Building A, which was the first to be built back in 2010. It has all the pharmacy, electrical engineering labs, the IT department, and the famous clock tower. And I will be telling you about Building B, which was built in 2015. Mein bani thi. It houses an amazing library, media production facilities. Science lab, a number of faculties as well as the pro rector's office. Or may I tell you about C building? Ke mein. With its rooftop cafe and a host of other facilities, this building was completed in 2018. And I'll be telling you about some important departments and facilities of our campus. So let's get started, guys. Follow me. Wait, aren't you forgetting something? What? What? DJ, let's hit it. begin with the auditorium jahan sare events hote hain and can you believe it it has a seating capacity of 400 auditorium ek aisi jagah hai jahan aap attend karenge speaker sessions conferences and guess what bahut sare theater plays or musical performances so right next to the auditorium we have a career services office where we help ensure the professional success of our students both during and after their studies So make sure कि आप इनको विजिट करें फॉर गाइडेंस एंड कोचिंग रिगार्डिंग स्टूडेंट एक्सचेंज प्रोग्राम जॉब इंटर्नशिप एंड ओवरऑल करियर डेवलपमेंट स्टूडेंट सर्विस सेंटर और एस एस सी इज अ पार्ट ऑफ बिल्डिंग एड इट हेल्प स्टूडेंट विद प्रोग्राम ट्रांसफर स्कॉलरशिप फीस सबमिशन स्टूडेंट रजिस्ट्रेशन एंड स्टूडेंट पोर्टल असिस्टेंस वी ऑल्सो हैव अ गर्ल्स हॉस्टल इन आर कैंपस इट इज सेंट्रली एयर कंडीशन हैज अनलिमिटेड वाई फाई और बहुत सारी ऐसी फैसिलिटीज जो आपको आपके घर की याद नहीं आने देंगे Welcome to the Faculty of Engineering, which is in the building. Ke hai. It contains 26 international standard labs for our electrical, mechanical, and civil engineering students. Welcome to Building B. Let's start our tour at the library. Shh, keep it low. Do you want to read alone or with your friends? The library has over 40,000 books on all kinds of topics. You will have access to different research databases. Ki. ये बिल्डिंग सी है और मैं कॉमन रूम में खड़ा हूँ ये एक ऐसी जगह है जहाँ स्टूडेंट्स अपने बिजी स्केजुअल से ब्रेक लेके रिलैक्स कर सकते हैं और अपने दोस्तों के साथ हैंग आउट कर सकते हैं ये है स्पोर्ट्स कॉम्प्लेक्स विद टू सेपरेट स्टेट ऑफ द आर्ट जिम्नेजियम फॉर मेन एंड वुमेन ट्वेंटी फाइव यार्ड फोर लेन स्विमिंग पूल एंड होस्ट ऑफ अदर फन एक्टिविटीज यूसीपी में बहुत सारे डिफरेंट क्लब्स एंड सोसाइटीज है जो डिफरेंट इवेंट्स एंड एक्टिविटीज करवाते हैं 
and all of this is organized under the umbrella of DSA. The B building lobby is mostly filled with media, life sciences and social sciences students and is centered around UCP's Hall of Fame. We have maintained our winning streak of the HEC InterVersity Sports Championship since the past 10 years. We're the reigning champions. Hashtag trophy comes home. Did you know UCP was the only university based 24 7 radio station in Pakistan? Our radio facility helps our students in all aspects of audio production. Our state of the art production house and NLE labs provide our students with every possible resource to write, edit, and produce compelling and engaging content. Moving on, the English Language Center is also part of the B building, which is based on a blend of a language lab and self access center model where students can enroll themselves to improve their English language proficiency. It is also home to various general and science labs for practical and research work. Defense Council in the act of genocide is clearly a great breach of international law and it is clearly prohibited under the Geneva Conventions Article uh, 4 and ICC Statute Article 6. Established as per the national standards of the High Court of Pakistan, the law move room helps our law students sharpen their litigation skills. UCP has a dedicated webinar room where regular online sessions are organized with esteemed international speakers. And as the pandemic has shown us all that learning doesn't always take place in person, the UCP webinar room has indeed helped in making distance learning a breeze. Everyone needs a place to kick back, relax and refuel. Though indoor cafes hone ke bawajood, Building C has a rooftop cafe where you can eat and hang out with your friends. A popular hangout and tea spot, the UCP Food Street is a one-stop to satisfy all your sweet food cravings. I'm happy to Thank you. And cut! Well done guys! The newest addition to UCP community, the MP Theatre is a place where you can attend acting classes and many jamming sessions. Hey, how's it going? Great! Let's go! UCP aims to instill spirit of entrepreneurship and innovation among its students with the help of on-campus incubation center. The goal of the clique is to create innovative solutions and to provide students with the tools required to launch successful entrepreneurial ventures. We are just scratching the surface. We hope you enjoyed this brief tour of our campus and remember, here at UCP, if you have a passion, you can pursue it. If you want to try something new, you can experiment. And if you have a dream, you can follow it and make it the, the center, center of, of your future. future. Assalamu alaikum, I am Mahbara Zaman and you are watching EDU TV. This program is Jamia Vijaj Shobha Vlaghiyat from Broadcasting House. The viewers are the third of our culture. If it is not, then the people and the government will never be able to do it. In this way, social media has been a great deal in our lives. For talking about these issues, today we are with me today. Assistant Professor of Journalism, Mahmood Ahmed. Assalamu alaikum, sir. How are you? Wa alaikum, salam. Sir, social media is sitting here on social media. So, let's start from here. What is the truth in the truth? In the name of Allah, the name of Allah, the name of Allah. Thank you, Mabara. As you said before, and it's a very common thing that people have heard from it. Yes. That the truth is the truth of the government and the people. The truth is the truth. We also read it, we also read it, we also read it. مگر صحافت شاید اس سے بہت بڑی چیز ہے صحافت بنری طور پر انسان کی جو تجسس کی جبلت ہے یہ اس کا اظہار ہے صحافت کسی نہ کسی طرح سے اپنا وجود کئی سو صدیوں سے قائم رکھتی چلی آئی ہے جب سے انسان نے زبان ایجاد کی جب سے اس نے 
کبھی لو کی صورت میں بسنا شروع کیا تو اس نے اطلاعات دینی شروع کر دی ہم اس چیز کو جانتے ہیں اور ہمارے پاس قبل از تاریخ کے زمانوں کے وہ ثبوت موجود ہیں وہ غاریں موجود ہیں جہاں پہ لوگوں نے زبان کی بھی ایجاد سے قبل تصویروں کے ذریعے یہ ابلاغ کیا کہ یہاں پہ ہم نے شکار کیا تھا یہاں پہ ہم نے فلاں جانور دیکھا تھا یہاں پہ ہم نے آگ جلائی تھی یہاں پہ ہماری جنگ ہو گئی تھی تو اس کے بعد جب زبان ایجاد ہو گئی انسانی معاشرے وجود میں آ گئے تو پھر صحافت لکھنے کے ذریعے اور زبانی ذریعوں سے ہونے لگی اس وقت شاید صحافت کی یہ شکل نہ ہو جو کہ آج ہے مگر اطلاعات تھیں کیونکہ انسان جاننا چاہتا ہے کہ میرے ارد گرد کیا ہو رہا ہے یہ جو مسافر سرائے میں آ کے ٹھہرا ہے یہ کون سے علاقوں سے آیا ہے اگر اس کی جلد کٹی پھٹی ہے اس کی داڑھی بہت بڑی ہوئی ہے تو یہ برفوں سے گزر کے آیا ہے ہمارے علاقے میں تو برف نہیں پڑتی تو وہ اس سے پوچھتے تھے کدھر سے آئے ہو وہاں پہ کون حکمران ہے کیا کرنے آئے ہو کیا خریدو گے کیا بیچو گے تو صحافت انسان کی زندگیوں کے ساتھ جڑی ہوئی ہے ہم آج کے زمانے میں جب صحافت کی بات کرتے ہیں تو صحافت ایک بہت وسیع صورت اختیار کر چکی ہے اب ہمارے پاس بہت سارے شعبہ جات ہیں جن میں تخصیص پیدا ہو چکی ہے ہمارے پاس سائنس ہے ہمارے پاس لٹریچر ہے ہمارے پاس پروفیشنز ہیں جیسے وکالت ہے جیسے میڈیسن ہے جیسے کامرس ہے جیسے ٹریڈنگ ہے یہ چیزیں ہیں تو دنیا میں موجود تمام شعبہ جات کے متعلق جو اطلاعات ہیں وہ تمام لوگ انہیں جاننا چاہ رہے ہیں کچھ لوگ تمام اطلاعات جاننا چاہتے ہیں کچھ ان میں سے مخصوص چیزیں جاننا چاہتے ہیں تو ان کے لیے پھر ٹیلی ویژن کا ریڈیو کا اخبار کا اور اب انٹرنیٹ کے ذریعے سوشل میڈیا کا استعمال ہو رہا ہے حکومت اور عوام ہم بنیادی طور پر جو دیکھتے ہیں تو واقعی کیا ہم اس سے چوتھا ستون کہہ سکتے ہیں کہ یہ ہماری ریاست کا چوتھا ستون ہے یہ بڑی امپورٹنٹ بات ہے یہ بات دو لوگوں سے منسوخ کی جاتی ہے اور شاید دونوں نہیں کہی ہو دونوں نائنٹین سینچری میں یونائٹڈ کنگڈم گریٹ بریٹن جو اس وقت ہوا کرتا تھا اس کے بڑے اہم رکن تھے لارڈ میکالے اور ایڈمنڈ برک بہت اچھے اوریٹر تھے ایڈمنڈ برک انہوں نے کہا تھا اس وقت کہا جاتا تھا کہ تین ستون ہیں کسی بھی جدید جمہوری ریاست کو تین ستون چلاتے ہیں ان میں سے ایک مکننہ ہے لیجسلیٹر دوسری عدلیہ ہے جوڈیشری اور تیسری آپ کی انتظامیہ ہے جو جو آپ کے افیسرز ہوتے ہیں یہ بھی ہے نا کہ اگر جو عدلیہ ہے اگر صحافت نہ ہو تو جو مظلوم پہ ظلم ہوتا ہے اس کے خلاف آواز نہ اٹھائی جائے تو ہماری ستر فیصد عدلیہ کو نہیں پتا ہوگا کہ یہ ظلم ہوا ہے یہ صحافیہ جو آواز اٹھاتا ہے تو وہ عدلیہ تک پہنچتا ورنہ تو ہمیں بھی نہیں پتا چلے گا کہ ہمارے ملک میں کتنا انصاف ہو رہا ہے مجادی طور پر اس وقت جب چوتھا ستون سے کہا گیا تو یہ جمہوری ریاستوں کے تناظر میں تھا کہ عوام باہبر کیسے رہ سکتے ہیں کہ باقی تین ستون کیا کر رہے ہیں اور باقی دو ستون جو ہیں اہم ایک آپ کا جو لیجسلیچر ہے اور دوسرا آپ کا جو ایگزیکٹیو ہے مکننہ اور انتظامیہ وہ عوام کو کیسے باہبر رکھ سکتے ہیں بنیادی طور پر اگر آپ سمجھیں تو صحافت کیا ہے صحافت رائے سازی ہے صحافت صرف انفارمیشن نہیں ہے بالکل صحافت میں جب ہم اس کی قسمیں پڑھتے ہیں اس میں جو پروگرامز ہم آج کل ہو رہے ہیں یا اخبار میں جو چھپ رہا ہے وہ کالم چھپتے ہیں اداریہ چھپتے ہیں خبر چھپتی ہے فیچر لکھا جاتا ہے لیٹر ٹو ایڈیٹر ہم لکھتے ہیں پھر ٹی وی میں آپ کے پاس خبر نامہ ہے پھر سیاست پہ بحث ہے پھر کھیل کا پروگرام ہے بچوں کے پروگرام ہے ہواتین کے ہیں ان میں کیا ہو رہا ہے ان میں رائے سازی کی جا رہی ہے لوگوں کے رجحانات طے کیے جاتے ہیں کہ لوگ کسی چیز کے بارے میں کیسے سوچیں تو بنیادی طور پر صحافت جو ہے وہ کیونکہ رائے سازی کر رہی ہے عوام کی رائے پہنچا بھی رہی ہے اور بیاک وقت رائے سازی کا فریضہ بھی سر انجام دے رہی ہے تو اس لیے اسے کہا جاتا ہے کہ جمہوری ریاست کا یہ چوتھا ستون ہے کیونکہ اگر ڈکٹیٹرشپ ہو تو اسے تو آزاد صحافت جو ہے وہ پنجابی میں کہتے ہیں وارے نہیں کھاتی دے ڈاؤنٹ نیڈ اٹ سو دے امپوز ریسٹرکشنس تو وہ اس پر پھر درجہ با درجہ پابندیاں لگاتے ہیں جمہوری ریاستیں بھی اس طرح سے کرتی ہیں جن کی ہم بات کر رہے ہیں گریٹ بریٹن کی وہاں پہ صحافت دوسرے ملکوں کی نسبت بہت بعد میں جا کر آزاد ہوئی مگر آج اس رائے میں مجھے تو کوئی شک نہیں کہ صحافت بہت اہم ستون ہے کسی بھی ریاست کا آپ کیا سمجھتے ہیں کہ ہماری صحافت جو ہے وہ آزاد ہے ہمارا صحافی آج صحافت کی آزادی کو پرکھنے کے بہت سارے طریقے ہیں اب کچھ صحافی ہیں جو کہتے ہیں کہ بات کرنے کا سلیقہ ہونا چاہیے پابندی کسی دور میں نہیں رہی حرون رشید صاحب نے کالم اس نام سے یہ بات ہے دوسری طرف اگر آپ دیکھیں تو آپ کے کئی صحافی ہیں جو آفر کر دیے گئے ہیں 
एक साल दो साल तीन साल में जी जी। पूरी दुनिया में ये होता है हमारा मुल्क कोई दुनिया से हट के नहीं चल रहा पूरी दुनिया में हुकूमत ये चाहती है कि उसके अच्छे कारनामों को फैलाया जाए और क्योंकि पूरी दुनिया में परफेक्शन तो कहीं पे भी मुमकिन नहीं हुकूमतों पे तनकीद हमेशा से होती आई है अपोजिशन की जमातें ढूंढती हैं उनके स्कैंडल्स और उनको वो मिलते भी हैं तो फिर वो आ, समझते हैं कि जब ये चीज़ें सामने आती हैं तो सहाफ़ियों को चुप करवाने की जो कोशिश की जाती है उसको कहा जाता है कि ये आज़ादी या सहाफ़त पर हमला है ज़्यादातर मैं जहाँ तक देखते हैं हम लोग के सहाफ़त के साथ ज़्यादातर बायस तहस का जो एक पहलू जोड़ दिया गया कि बायस होते हैं पहली जहन में यही बात आती है कि जर्नलिस्ट वो वो तो बायस होते हैं तो इसके बारे में अच्छा बड़ी ये बड़ा एक कन्फ्यूजिंग सा मसला है हम भी पढ़ते आए हैं पढ़ाते आए हैं अभी तक मगर मैं समझता हूं कि इंसान अपने बायस पर काबू नहीं पा सकता मिसाल के तौर पर अगर मैं कॉलमिस्ट हूं या मैं दारिया नवेस हूं मैंने राय साजी करनी है तो मुझे कुछ बेहतर लगेगा कुछ बुरा लगेगा हम कंट्रोवर्शियल मिसाल आज के दौर की नहीं लेते हम पुराने दौर की मिसाल लेते हैं जो लोग गुजर चुके हैं ताकि अगर हम बात करें तो हमारी बचत भी हो जाए एडोल्फ हिटलर दूसरी आलमी जंग में जर्मनी के रहनुमा थे उन्होंने जर्मनी से दूसरी आलमी जंग शुरू की बहुत खतरनाक जंग थी दस करोड़ से ज़्यादा लोग मर गए पूरा यूरोप तबाह हो गया कुछ लोग उस दौर में भी जर्मनी में रह के हिटलर के खिलाफ लिखते थे ठीक है जी इसी तरह से लोग लोगों के खिलाफ लिखते हैं अब अगर उस वक्त वो लोग जो हैं उन्हें बायस कहा जाता कि तुम तो जर्मनी के हक में नहीं हो तुम तो जर्मनी के खिलाफ हो हमारे रहनुमा को बुरा कह रहे हो देखो हमने बेल्जियम फतेह कर लिया हमने फ्रांस फतेह कर लिया हमने हॉलैंड फतेह कर लिया नॉर्वे स्वीडन सारे हमने कब्जे में कर लिए मुल्क इतनी हमारी ताकतवर फौज है इतनी बड़ी इकॉनमी है वो दुनिया की उस वक्त की सबसे बड़ी फौजी ताकत थी उस वक्त जो लोग ये कह रहे थे कि ये बंदा तबाह ही लाने वाला है हमारे ऊपर जर्मनी में रह कर कई स्कॉलर से और उनमें फ्रैंकफर्ट स्कूल ऑफ थाट के आमकारी भी ये देख रहे हैं मैस कम्युनिकेशन के कुछ स्कॉलर से वो ये कहते थे कि ये बंदा तबाही ला रहा है इसकी सोच मुस्बत नहीं है ये इंसानियत के लिए खतरा बन जाएगा ठीक है जी तो बेसिकली तो पे आप हमारे देखें में क्या करदार अदा कर रही है यही मैं आपको बताने लगा हूँ ना कि वो सहाफ़ी राय साज थे अब आपने बात की कि बायस होता है सहाफ़ी में सहाफ़ी में बायस होता है इसीलिए तो वो राय साजी करता है दूसरी तरफ आवाम में भी तो अकल मौजूद है ना और अब तो इतने ज़्यादा जरिया या बलाग वजूद में आ चुके हैं कि आप किसी भी बायस को बड़े आसानी के साथ टैकल कर सकते हैं तो बायस रहनी चाहिए शायद यही जमहूरी माशरे का हुसन है कि मुख्तलिफ आरा सामने आती रहती हैं अगर मैं समझूँ कि मैं अकल कुल हूँ और मुझे सारी सहाफत आती है तो इसका मतलब है कि बाकी जो लोग हैं उनकी राय इम्पोर्टेंट नहीं रही तो अगर मैं गलत भी सोचूँगा और इंसान गलती करता है तो फिर इसको कोई सुधारने वाला नहीं होगा वो जो बहुत एक मशहूर बात है कि बादशाह सलामत को एक लिबास दिया गया और वो कहने वाले कहते हैं कि वो इतना महीन था कि उनको कहा गया कि ये आप पहन लें तो आप बिल्कुल आपको महसूस ही नहीं होगा तो बुनियादी तौर पर वो लिबास वहाँ पे था ही नहीं तो बादशाह सलामत कुदरती हालत में ही बाहर निकल आए तो सारे जो दरबारी थे वो कह रहे थे कि लिबास की तारीफ होनी चाहिए हाँ। लिबास बड़ा अच्छा है तो उसके मौका पर एक बच्चा बोला तो उसने कहा कि बादशाह तो नंगा है तो हम यहाँ पर क्या ये कह सकते हैं कि बच्चा बायस था उसकी राय थी अपनी अपनी राय है हाँ जी ठीक है तो सहाफत हमारे माशरे को जिस तरह से पहलू है बहुत से कि वो अच्छा करदार अदा कर रही है तो मुतासर किस तरह से हमारे माशरे को कर रही है ये सहाफत मुतासर कैसे कर रही है हाँ सहाफत माशरे को मुतासर हमेशा से करती है अब पॉजिटिव सेंस में इन्फ्लुंस करना या नेगेटिव सेंस में इन्फ्लुंस करना ये डिबेटेबल बातें हैं मिसाल के तौर पर अगर सहाफ़ी किसी माशरे में बैलेंस नहीं रखेगा वो मायूसी फैलाने लग पाएगा ठीक है माशरे उनमें मसाइल आते हैं हुकूमतों में मसाइल होते हैं मगर सहाफ़ी का काम है कि वो अगर अपनी फील्ड के साथ सिंसियर है और उसके पास अच्छी इंफॉर्मेशन है तो वो वे आउट भी बताता है आप अगर किसी मसले का हल नहीं बता सकते तो सिर्फ उसे पॉइंट आउट करते हैं तो फिर आप ये भी लोगों को दावत दे रहे होते हैं कि जो लोग उन मसाइल को बुनियाद बनाकर एक अनारकी की तरफ चीज़ें लेके जा, जा सकते हैं सहाफ़ी बुनियादी तौर पर आवाम को गाइड करने के साथ साथ अरबाब अख्तियार को भी गाइड कर सकते हैं माशरे में एक बैलेंस रखना उनको अनारकी की तरफ ना जाने देना ये भी सहाफ़त के बस में है आप अपनी ख़बर लिखने के लिए आप अपने प्रोग्राम में बोलने के लिए जिन अल्फाज का इस्तेमाल करते हैं उनका एक झुकाव होता है आप जिन अदादोशुमार को पेश करने के लिए मुंतब करते हैं उनका एक असर होता है 
ایک سیم ہی ایک واقعہ ہوا ہے مثال کے طور پر واقعہ لے لیتے ہیں یہ جو مری میں ہمارے ساتھ سامنا ہوا ہے ہمارے تیئیس لوگ وہاں پہ شہید ہو چکے ہو گئے ہیں اب وہ لوگ وہاں پہ سیر کرنے گئے تھے ایک انفارچونیٹ انسیڈنٹ ہوا اب کیا اس بات پر ایک جنگ کا ایک انارکی کا ماحول پیدا کر دیا جائے اور مری کو ایک ایسا علاقہ ڈکلیئر کر دیا جائے خبروں میں یا پروگرامس میں یا کالم میں کہ وہاں پہ جو جائے گا وہ خدا نہ حادثہ کچھ نہ کچھ اس کے ساتھ غلط ہی ہوگا یہ کہتے ہیں کہ میڈیا نے اس سے پہلے یہ تو دکھایا کہ بڑا ایش و عشرت کر رہے ہیں مطلب بڑا فن ہو رہا ہے وہاں پہ تو یہ چیز پہلے کیوں نہیں بتائے گی کہ موسم خراب ہے تو آپ لوگ نہ جائیں تو یہ چیز ہے نا کہ وہی میں ارز کر رہا ہوں کہ بیلنس ہونا چاہیے نا رپورٹنگ کا بیلنس کیا ہے اب آپ مری کی بات بالکل رپورٹ کریں جو لوگ وہاں پہ ذمہ دار ہیں انہیں کسی صورت معاف نہیں کیا جا سکتا انسانی جان سے زیادہ قیمتی کسی چیز کی حرمت نہیں ہے مگر ہم نے اب یہ بھی تو بتانا ہے نا کہ سیاحوں کو کون سی سہولیات وہاں پہ حاصل ہیں ہاں جی وہاں پہ کون کون سی روڈس کھلی ہیں کن کن روڈس پہ جا کر کن کن جگہوں پر قیام کیا جا سکتا ہے صحافی یہ بھی بتا رہے ہیں کہ اس قسم کی آفت میں جب اچانک کتنی زیادہ برف پڑ جائے تو پھر کیا ہونا چاہیے اس کے لیے پہلے سے کام ہونے چاہیے ہاں تھے ذمہ داروں کو بے نقاب کریں انہیں پوائنٹ آؤٹ کریں مگر اس ایک حادثے کو لے کر اگر ہاں یہاں پہ ایک باعث کا نگیٹو پہلو بھی آتا ہے اگر آپ کا باعث حکومت کے ساتھ بہت زیادہ ہے تو آپ اس ایک واقعے کو اتنا زیادہ ہائی لائٹ کریں گے کہ پورے ملک میں بیٹھے ہوئے لوگ یہ سوچیں گے کہ گھر سے باہر نکلیں گے تو مریں گے ہاں جی بالکل حالانکہ یہ ہونا چاہیے کہ ایکچل صورت حال کو پیش کریں اور کسی بھی حالت میں آپ حالات کو زیادہ خرابی کی طرف نہ جانے دیں ٹھیک ہے تو یہ جس طرح میں نے بات کی سوشل میڈیا کے شروع کے ہمارے خوراک کی طرح ہمارے لیے ضروری ہو گیا سوشل میڈیا تو اس نے صحافت کو کس طرح سے آسان کیا کتنی آسانی ہوئی ہے صحافت نے سوشل میڈیا کے ذریعے سوشل میڈیا ایک بہت بڑا انقلاب ہے اس میں کوئی شک نہیں مگر ایک بات ذہن میں رہے کہ یہ ایک ٹیکنالوجیکل ایڈوانسمنٹ ہے انسان کی جبیلت وہی ہے صحافت کے تقاضے وہی ہیں وہ تبدیل نہیں ہوئے اچھا اس ٹیکنالوجیکل ایڈوانسمنٹ نے کچھ حدودوں کو یود ختم کر دی ہیں اس کے آنے سے پہلے آپ کو اپنی اطلاع یا اپنی رائے زیادہ لوگوں تک پہنچانے کے لیے ٹیلی ویژن اخبار ریڈیو کسی ایسی چیز کا کتاب کا سہارا لینا پڑتا تھا اب آپ کے پاس ایک ایسا ٹول آ گیا ہے کہ آپ فیس بک پہ ٹویٹر پہ انسٹاگرام پہ ٹک ٹاک پہ کسی بھی فورم پہ جا کے ایک اکاؤنٹ بناتے ہیں اور پھر آپ کے فالوورس بننا شروع ہوتے ہیں آپ دیکھ لیں کہ میرے فالوورس کس طرح کے ہیں تو پھر ان کا آپ کی بہت زیادہ فین فالوئنگ ہو جاتی ہے مثال کے طور پر ہمارے پاس بہت سے اکاؤنٹس ایسے ہیں سوشل میڈیا پہ جہاں پہ لوگ کھانا پکانا صرف کھانا پکا رہے ہیں بیٹھ کے ان کے فالوورس ہیں لوگ جو ہیں وہ سیر کر رہے ہیں ان کے فالوورس ہیں ٹھیک ہے اور ملینس اور ملینس میں ہیں اور کچھ بالکل لا یعنی ویڈیوز ہیں اور ان کے بھی ملینس اور بلینس میں ویوز ہیں ٹھیک ہے جی سوشل میڈیا نے دو چیزیں ختم کر دی ہیں ایڈیٹوریل کنٹرول ختم ہو گیا ہے ایڈیٹوریل کنٹرول یہ ہوتا تھا کہ جو صحافتی ادارے کام کر رہے ہیں جو اخبارات ہیں جو ٹی وی چینلز ہیں جو ریڈیو چینلز ہیں ان میں ایک ایڈیٹوریل کنٹرول ہوتا تھا اور وہاں پہ ایک پروسیس ہوتا تھا کہ خبر یا کوئی بھی کانٹینٹ تین چار پانچ ہاتھوں سے گزر کر چھپتا تھا یا نشر ہوتا تھا اب سوشل میڈیا پہ وہ چیز ختم ہو گئی ہے روایتی میڈیا کو اتنا زیادہ متاثر کیا ہے کہ سمجھ لیں کہ اس کی کور کو ہٹ کر دیا دوسرا یہ ہے کہ یہ فری ہے آپ کو اخبار خریدنا پڑتا ہے آپ کو ٹی وی کے لیے بھی کرنا پڑتا ہے اور یہ آپ کا جیبی میڈیم بن گیا ہے میڈیا ہمیشہ آپ کے پاس آ گیا آپ کسی بھی وقت جیب سے موبائل نکال لیں آپ میڈیا دیکھ لیں اور یہ پچھلے دس سال میں ہوا سب کچھ روایتی میڈیا کو اس نے اتنا زیادہ انفلوئنس کیا ہے کہ میرے حیال میں اس وقت پاکستان کا ایک بھی پاکستان کی ذکر کرتے ہیں باقی دنیا میں تو پہلے ہو چکا ہے نا ایک بھی ایسا نیوز پیپر نہیں ہے ایک بھی ایسا ہمارا ٹی وی چینل نہیں ہے جو اپنا سوشل میڈیا کی پریزنس نہیں رکھتے ہاں جی روایتی صحافیوں نے اس سے بہت اچھا فائدہ اٹھایا انہوں نے اپنے اکاؤنٹس بنائے ہیں اور لوگوں کو لمحہ بلمحہ سمجھ لیں لائیو صورت حال سے انہوں نے آگاہ کرنا شروع کر دیا مگر وہاں پہ بہت سے صحافی یوٹیوب پہ آ گئے ہیں ادھر سے چھوڑ انہوں نے بڑے اچھے طریقے سے ان تمام میڈیمز کا استعمال کیا ہے اور وہاں پہ ہمارے نقصان کیا ہوا ہے وہی بھی جو میں نے سب سے پہلے بات کی نا کہ ایڈیٹوریل کنٹرول ختم ہو گیا اب اب ہمارے پاس کچھ قانون بن رہا ہے سوشل میڈیا کے اس سے پہلے سوشل میڈیا پہ کوئی قانون نہیں تھا آپ کسی بھی بندے پہ اپنے اکاؤنٹ سے کوئی بھی الزام لگا جی بالکل ایسی بات آپ کو کسی طریقے سے پکڑے نہیں جا سکتا آپ ہالینڈ میں بیٹھے ہیں آپ امریکہ میں بیٹھے ہیں آپ جناب پناما میں بیٹھے ہیں آپ آسٹریلیا میں بیٹھے ہیں پاکستان میں کسی بھی سیاسی رہنما پہ کسی بھی مذہبی
بنیادی اخلاقیات کو فالو نہیں کیا جاتا بہت زیادہ اگر ہم ان کی ٹائم لائنس پہ جائیں لوگوں کی بحثیں پڑھیں تو ان میں بندہ پریشان ہو جاتا ہے کہ یہ کس طرح کی اخلاقیات ہیں ان کی کس طرح کی یہ زبان استعمال کر رہے ہیں ایون مشہور صحافیوں کے ساتھ جو جو ٹرالنگ اس کو ہم ٹرالنگ کا ایشو کہتے ہیں جس طرح سے ان کے ساتھ جو کام ہوتے ہیں تو وہ ذرا ایڈیٹوریل کنٹرول نہ ہونا کسی قانون کا اس پہ امپلیمنٹ نہ ہونا اس کا نتیجہ ہے جو آپ کے تھوڑے سے معاشرے ان میڈیمس کے ساتھ گو تھرو ہو چکے ہیں یا انہوں نے ان کا ادراک پہلے کر لیا تھا انہوں نے تو اپنا سابق جو صدر ہیں ان کا ٹویٹر اکاؤنٹ بند کر دیا تھا ڈونلڈ ٹرمپ کا اکاؤنٹ معطل کرنا ٹویٹر کا بڑا ہی بولڈ فیصلہ تھا مگر انہوں نے کیوں کیا انہوں نے اپنے ملک کو انارکی سے بچانے کے لیے کیا کیا ہم اس طرح کا کوئی بولڈ ڈسیزن کر سکتے ہیں نہیں سوشل میڈیا کا ایک اور یہ بہت اہم اس کی ایک کریکٹرسٹک ہے کہ وہ عام حکومتوں کے کنٹرول میں نہیں ہے فیس بک ٹویٹر انسٹاگرام یوٹیوب ٹک ٹاک یہ کسی حکومت کی ملکیت نہیں ہے سی این این کے دفاتر زمین پر موجود ہیں کسی حکومت کے کنٹرول میں ہیں ان پہ لا لاگو ہوتا ہے ہم جس ملک میں براڈ کاسٹنگ ہو رہی ہے اخبار چھپ رہا ہے وہاں قوانین ہیں اب آپ پہلے ان کمپنیز کے ساتھ معاہدہ کرتے ہیں پھر اگر وہ معاہدہ وائلٹ کریں تو پھر بھی آپ کے ملک میں سہولت ہوتی ہے کہ کہیں نہ کہیں سے ان کو یوز کر سکتے ہیں تو پھر آپ پورا کا پورا انٹرنیٹ بند کر دیتے ہیں جب آپ نے کسی ایک میڈیم کو بند کرنا ہوتا ہے تو یہ مسائل حکومتوں کو بھی فیس کرنا پڑ رہے ہیں سوشل میڈیا کی وجہ سے کہ ان پلیٹ فارمس کا کنٹرول ان کے ہاتھ میں نہیں ہے بلکہ پچھلے دنوں کہیں پہ تو یہ تجاویز بھی سامنے آ رہی تھیں کہ یہ لوگ اتنے طاقتور ہو گئے ہیں کہ کچھ فورم یہ مطالبہ کر رہے تھے یونائٹیڈ نیشنس میں ان کے جو اونرز ہیں ان ٹیک کمپنیز کے تین سے چار مشہور بڑے اونرز ان کو نمائندگی دی جائے مگر وہ ملک کیونکہ ذرا ہم سے تھوڑے سے زیادہ سمجھدار ہیں تو وہ ان کے اوپر کسی نہ کسی قسم کا چیک ضرور رکھیں گے پھر یہاں پہ سوشل میڈیا کا ایک اور بڑی امپورٹنٹ چیز ہے جو ہم عام طور پر شاید نہیں جانتے سوشل میڈیا پہ کچھ بھی اپلوڈ ہو گیا پھر وہ ہمارا کانٹینٹ نہیں ہے بالکل اس کو پھر وہ ہمارے ہاتھ بات. سے نکل گیا ہے پھر وہ اس کی کوئی پرائیویسی نہیں ہے کسی قسم کی اچھا پھر ہم سمجھتے ہیں کہ ہمارے اکاؤنٹس بہت زیادہ پرائیویٹ ہیں ہمارے اکاؤنٹس کی کوئی پرائیویسی نہیں کوئی ہوتی نہیں ہے بالکل ایسی بات ہے تو ہمارے جو عام لوگ جرنلزم کے لیے سے صحافیوں کے علاوہ یوز کر رہے ہیں ان کو بہت کوشش ہونا چاہیے بالکل کیونکہ ان کا سوشل میڈیا اکاؤنٹ بالکل وہی کردار ادا کر رہا ہے جو اخبارات کر رہے تھے جو ٹی وی کر رہا تھا لوگ تو ان کو دیکھ رہے ہیں لوگ ان کو سن رہے ہیں لوگ ان سے انسپریشن لیں گے تو پہلے یہ ہوتا تھا کہ لوگ کسی قانون کے پابند ہوتے تھے اب نہیں ہیں پھر اخبار کے دفتر میں لکھنے والے کو آپ جانتی تھیں میں جانتا تھا ٹی وی پہ بیٹھ کے بولنے والا بندہ وہاں پہ جا کے پروگرام کر رہا ہے سوشل میڈیا پہ نا ہماری فزیکل پریزنس نہیں ہے دنیا میں ٹھیک ہے ہمارا ایک ورچوئل وجود ہے اور ایک ہمارا دوسرا وجود ہے اب ہم اپنے ورچوئل وجود کے ساتھ لوگوں کی بہتری کرنا چاہتے ہیں یا ہم صرف اور صرف فار دا سیک آف فن یا کسی ہڈن پرپز کو لے کر انارکی کی طرف لے کے جا رہے ہیں لوگوں کو سوشل میڈیا پہ لوگ لوگوں کے سامنے نہیں ہوتے تو وہاں پہ زبان اچھی استعمال نہیں کرتے وہاں پہ وہ صبر نہیں دکھاتے اور بڑا عجیب سا بھی کر دیتے ہیں یہ صحافت کو نقصان دے گا ٹھیک ہے جہاں صحافت کے لیے آسانیاں کچھ پیدا کی ہیں وہاں ہماری پرائیویسی کو بھی ڈسٹرب کیا ہے اور اس کے ساتھ اب اس نے ہمارے سوشل پیٹرن کو کس طرح سے متاثر کیا یہ بتائیں پیٹرن جو ہمارے سوشل بہیویئر تھاٹس ہماری ان سب کو کنٹرول کر لیا سوشل میڈیا تو یہ اس میں کیا آپ بتائیں گے ہم ہاں جی جب سکرین ٹائم میں ماہپارا اضافہ ہوگا تو ظاہر ہے کہ آپ کا جو مین ٹو مین کانٹیکٹ تھا وہ کم ہو جائے گا کمیونیکیشن جو ہماری فیس ٹو فیس ایک ہوتا ہے یہ بات جب ٹیلی ویژن آیا تھا نا اسی وقت سے یہ کنسرنز ہیں لوگوں کے کہ آپ کا جو فوک کلچر ہے اس کو یہ میڈیمز نقصان دے رہے ہیں ہم تو سمجھتے ہیں نا کہ نہیں وہ فوک کلچر کو تو ہم پروموٹ کر رہے ہیں فوک کلچر کیا تھا فوک کلچر یہ تھا کہ آپ کہانیاں سنتے تھے کسی گھر کے بڑے فرد سے یا لوگ اکٹھے بیٹھتے تھے شہروں میں گاؤں میں ہمارے لوکل کلچر کے حوالے سے بات چیت ہوتی تھی گفتگو ہوتی تھی وہ بیٹھکیں کم ہوتی گئیں آہستہ آہستہ اور پھر ختم ہو گئیں پھر یہ تھا کہ گیمز تھیں بچوں کی گیمز بھی ورچوئل آ گئیں فزیکل گیمز بہت کم ہو گئیں پھر آپس کا ملنا ملانا تھا اب تو یہ بھی کہا جاتا ہے کہ سوشل میڈیا کے حوالے سے کہ لوگ ایک گھر میں رہ کے ایک دوسرے کو نہیں مل پاتے کیونکہ آپ سکرین ٹائم آپ کو چاہیے جتنا آپ کا سکرین ٹائم میں اضافہ ہوگا آپ ایک ورچوئل اپنی پرسنالٹی کے عادی ہوتے جائیں گے اور آپ کو ورچوئل پرسنالٹی
इम्पॉर्टेंट हो जाएगा तो फिर ये तब्दीली और ये बदलाव अलार्मिंग है इस पर तहकीक हो भी बहुत सारी रही है और सोशोलॉजी में होनी भी चाहिए कि ये जो लिंक है इसके साथ कल्चर का बदलना इसके साथ फिर हमारे सोशल बिहेवियर्स के हम फिर दो पर्सनालिटीज में सप्लिट तो नहीं हो जाएंगे एक हमारी वर्चुअल पर्सनालिटी होगी एक हमारी ओरिजिनल ये चीज़ है ना कि हम सिलेक्टिव पोस्ट करते हैं कि मतलब मैं खुद सैड हूँ ठीक है तो मैंने पोस्ट वो किया मैंने वो जो मैं जब मरी गई थी ठीक है तो वो मैं निकाल के कर दी पोस्ट अब दूसरे देखने वाले भी उससे आ गए कि भाई अगला तो मरी घूम रहा है हम लोग यहाँ आए तो ये भी एक है कि अगले के बिहेवियर को भी हराव करना अगले की थॉट्स को मैं ये आपको कह रहा हूँ ना कि ये फिर आपकी पर्सनालिटी सप्लीट हो रही है चीजें हम लगाते हैं एक आपकी वर्चुअल पर्सनालिटी आ गई है उसमें आपने अपनी मर्जी से अपने आप को पोर्ट्रेट करना है आपके हाथ में ना वो एक कुत आ गई है जो फिक्शन राइटर के पास नहीं होती हाँ की वो अपनी मर्जी की दुनिया तहलीक कर लेता है तो आप अपनी पर्सनैलिटी को री करके सोशल मीडिया पे पेश कर रहे हैं तो ये सोशल पैटर्न को और सोशल बिहेवियर को जाहिर है इसने डिस्टर्ब करना है इसका एक बड़ा आसान सा इलाज है ना कि जो हमारे पेरेंट्स हैं उन पे बहुत बड़ी ये जिम्मेदारी आयद होती है कि वो अपने बच्चों को वॉच करें क्यों आपकी जो वेबसाइट्स हैं वो आपसे मांगती हैं कि भाई अपनी पर्सनल इन्फॉर्मेशन दो कितना उम्र है तुम्हारी कितना कितने बहन भाई हो ये यहाँ पे डेट ऑफ बर्थ लिखो जरा हम तुम्हारा देखें तुम कौन सा कॉन्टेंट देख रहे हो किधर जा रहे हो क्या कर रहे हो और वेस्ट में तो अब इस पर इतने ज़्यादा फिल्टर लग गए हैं कि वो आपकी जो हिस्ट्री है ब्राउजिंग हिस्ट्री इससे वो पैटर्न तय कर लेते हैं कि इस बंदे को क्या चाहिए या क्या ढूंढ रहा है और इससे वो तो इससे टेरिस पे पकड़ना शुरू हो गए हैं सोशल मीडिया के इंट्रैक्शन से तो सर स्टूडेंट्स ऑफ जर्नलिज्म जो वो किस तरह से इसको यूज कर रहे हैं सोशल मीडिया को स्टूडेंट ऑफ जर्नलिज्म भी जाहिर है इसी दुनिया में रहते हैं लेकिन तो, होता है ना कि उनको थोड़ा टीच किया जाता हाँ है वो उनको फॉलो करते हैं जो उनको बताया जाता है कि आपने इस तरह नहीं इस तरह इसको यूज करना है स्टूडेंट किसी भी शोबे में हो वो जब तक प्रैक्टिकल फील्ड में नहीं जाता वो स्टूडेंट ही होता है तो फिर वो अपनी मर्जी करते हैं यंग हैं उनका भी जाहिर है उनकी दिलचस्पियाँ हैं ये आपकी पर्सनैलिटी पर डिपेंड करता है कि आपने क्या करना है ठीक है आप स्टूडेंट ऑफ जर्नलिज्म उनके पास एक बहुत बड़ी लैब आ गई है वैसे जो कि आज से दस साल पहले ये चांस नहीं था अगर आप अच्छा आर्टिकल लिख सकते हैं तो आप एक मश्क शुरू कर दें आपको किसी अखबार की जरूरत नहीं आपको किसी टीवी चैनल की जरूरत नहीं आप अपना एक ब्लॉगिंग अकाउंट बना लें एक कोई पेज बना लें उस पर आप अपनी राय का इजहार शुरू कर दें और वो आपके जो फॉलोअर्स हैं उन तक पहुँचना शुरू हो जाएगा अगर आप समझते हैं कि मैं किसी मौजू पर अच्छा बोल सकता हूँ वो कर लें यूट्यूब आपके पास है आप समझते हैं कि मैं अच्छी डॉक्यूमेंट्री बना सकता हूँ मैं अच्छा ट्रैवल राइटर बन सकता हूँ मैंने जैसे सबसे पहले बात की ना कि जर्नलिज्म में बहुत ज़्यादा फैल चुका है अब जो बंदा स्पोर्ट्स के साथ रिलेटेड है वो अपने आप को स्पोर्ट्स जर्नलिस्ट करवाना पसंद करता है लोग शोबिस में काम करने वाले लोग अपने का आपको शोबिस जर्नलिस्ट कहते हैं तो सहाफत एक बड़ा ग्लैमरस सब्जेक्ट बन चुका है ना लोग इसके साथ जुड़ना पसंद करते हैं आप देखें ना कहीं पर जाके तो जो दूसरे शोबों में भी लोग होंगे वो चाहेंगे कि हम कुछ ना कुछ लिखें किसी अखबार के साथ किसी टीवी के साथ मुंसलिक हों हमारी बात सुनी जाए हमारी राय को इम्पोर्टेंस दी जाए जाहिर उससे पर्सनैलिटी का एक्सपोजर ज़्यादा होता है जर्नलिज्म के स्टूडेंट इस मीडियम को इस्तेमाल बड़े खूबसूरती से कर सकते हैं उनके पास अब कोई वो लिमिटेशन नहीं है नेक्स्ट क्वेश्चन था कि वो किस तरह से आप क्या सजेस्ट करेंगे कि वो किस तरह इसको यूज़ करें एज अ स्टूडेंट ऑफ जर्नलिज्म वो जाहिर है इसको अपने पर्पस के लिए यूज़ करें वो जिस भी फील्ड में जाना चाहते हैं आगे उनको जिस फील्ड में इंटरेस्ट है उसके लिए इसको प्रैक्टिस करें अब तो सोशल मीडिया एक बाकायदा फील्ड है ना जिसको पढ़ाया जाता है एक स्पेशलाइजेशन के तौर पर कि आप सोशल मीडिया को सहावत के लिए कैसे इस्तेमाल कर सकते हैं और अब हमारे पास बड़े बड़े सेटअप मौजूद हैं उन्होंने कई सौ लोग रखे हुए हैं एक यूट्यूब के चैनल को ऑपरेट करने के लिए और आगे शायद मुस्तबिल करीब में आप देखें कि ये दूसरे मीडियम से बहुत ज़्यादा इम्पोर्टेंस इख्तियार कर जाए क्योंकि मेरे ख्याल में आपकी जो नस्ल है इसका मीडियम ही सोशल मीडिया है जी बिल्कुल अब तो कोई टीवी देखना पसंद नहीं करता और पता नहीं लास्ट टाइम कब टीवी ऑन किया था अखबार और टेलीविजन जो है ये उसका मकसद पूरा कर रहा है टेलीविजन भी अपनी जितनी इंपॉर्टेंट चीज़ें हैं वो अपने अकाउंट से ट्वीट कर रहे हैं अपने फेसबुक पर लगा रहे हैं अपने YouTube चैनल्स पे अपलोड कर रहे हैं पूरे के पूरे प्रोग्राम यानी कि अब जियो न्यूज देखे आप यार वाई देखे तो वो हाँ उन्होंने ज्यादा उनके व्यूज किधर आते हैं YouTube पे आते हैं उनकी हेडलाइंस हम YouTube पे देखते हैं अब मैं आपसे रज करूँ कि अब आपके जो टेलीविजन चल रहे हैं अब केबल सिस्टम को रिप्लेस कर रहे हैं आपका एंड्रॉयड सिस्टम या जो पी का स्मार्ट टी है अब इसको हम प्योर टेलीविजन नहीं कहेंगे ये अब सोशल मीडिया के जुमरे में आएगा अगर आपने लाइव
ठीक है जी आपका जो टी चैनल है वो बेशक कराची से अपडेट हो रहा है और आप कराची में बैठ कर देख रहे हैं मगर यूट्यूब का हेड ऑफिस जो है वो कैलिफोर्निया ठीक होगा सर हमें अभी आप अपने रिमार्क्स दे दें कंक्लूजन के और उसके बाद हम कंक्लूड करते हैं हाँ जैसे सोशल मीडिया पे हम बात कर रहे हैं कि सहाफत और सोशल मीडिया पे तो एक तो हमने हिस्टोरिकल परस्पेक्टिव में गुफ्तु की है जी। हमने हिस्टोरिकल परस्पेक्टिव में गुफ्तु की है दूसरा ये है कि सोशल मीडिया के इस्तेमाल के बारे में हमारी बात हुई है तो कंक्लूडिंग रिमार्क्स यही है कि ये नए दौर का मीडियम है और ये पुराने मीडियम को ला महला इसने असर पहुँचाना ही पहुँचाना है जैसे रवायती कहानी कोई ख़त्म हो चुकी है और पुराने तरीके हबर के ख़त्म हो गए थे जब ये वाले मीडियम आए थे जब जब छापा खाना आया था प्रिंट होना मशीनों पे प्रिंटिंग स्टार्ट हुई थी तो कलमी हताती आहिस्ता आहिस्ता कलमी अखबारत और कलमी किताबें ख़त्म हो गई हैं बेशक अभी हम पढ़ते हैं उस वक्त लोग कहते थे कि हमें ना लुत्फ नहीं आता हम टाइप की लिखाई पढ़ते हैं और ये बातें लिखी हुई हैं अभी वो अच्छी नहीं होती खूबसूरत नहीं होती और हाथ से लिखा हुआ हमें बहुत पसंद है मगर वो चीज़ आहिस्ता आहिस्ता ख़त्म हो गई अब सोशल मीडिया आया है अब इसमें अखबार की टीवी की और रेडियो की सारी खसूसियात मौजूद हैं तो शायद ये उनको रिप्लेस कर दे ठीक है क्योंकि इसकी एक्सेस मीडिया... आसान है तो सोशल मीडिया के हवाले से मैं यही कहना चाहूँगी कि जो हम सोशल मीडिया यूज़ करते हैं लास्ट टाइम मैं मेरे देखने में एक खबर आई कि एक लड़की है ठीक है वो हॉस्टल रह रही है जाके घर वालों से दूर अब उसने अपने सोशल मीडिया अकाउंट्स पर पार्टी हो रही है आ, उसके बाद कॉलेज में जा रही हूँ क्लासेस ले रही हूँ हर काम कर रही हूँ ठीक है और बहुत ही अच्छी पोस्ट की है लेकिन सुनने में क्या आता है कि दो दिन के बाद उस लड़की ने सुसाइड अटैम्प्ट कर ली और अब सोशल मीडिया की लाइफ और वो उसकी लाइफ में क्या चल रहा था बिल्कुल पता नहीं है उस घर वालों को ये है कि सोशल मीडिया पर बहुत ज़्यादा एक्टिव है और बहुत खुश है तो अब उसकी रीज़न डेथ की क्या थी वो सामने नहीं आ पाई ना उसने किसी से शेयर की तो ये सोशल मीडिया ने हमें इस हद तक कर दिया कि हम अपना जो रियल है वो हम नहीं दिखा पा रहे जी मैं वही अर्ज दूसरी तीसरी दफ़ा कर रहा हूँ कि हम सप्लिट हो रहे हैं ना हमारी वर्चुअल पर्सनालिटी और हमारी जो एक्चुअल पर्सनालिटी है उसमें डिफरेंस आ रहा है और ये बात इस मीडियम को लेकर बहुत इम्पोर्टेंट है इसलिए वो एक शेर है कि गम बांटने की चीज़ नहीं फिर भी दोस्तों एक दूसरे के हाल से बिल्कुल वाकिफ रहा करो जी, सोशल मीडिया से तो सोशल मीडिया की जो आपकी प्रेजेंस है या वो जो पर्सनैलिटी है उससे आपकी एक्चुअल पर्सनैलिटी आपकी एक्चुअल ज़िंदगी मुख्त हो सकती है तो अगर हम ये ध्यान रखें अपना कि हम इसमें बिल्कुल ही इंडल्ज ना हो जाएं या इसको इतनी इम्पोर्टेंस देनी ना शुरू कर दें कि इस पे अपने आप को कायम रखने के लिए हम बाकी अपनी मेंटल हेल्थ को सेक्रीफाइस कर दें तो फिर ये हमारे लिए बहुत ज़्यादा नुकसान है सर थैंक यू सो मच आपने हमें अपना वक्त दिया जी और इस प्रोग्राम से हमने बहुत कुछ सीखा कि सहाफत किधर थी किधर आ गई और अब सोशल मीडिया ने हमें किस तरह से अफेक्ट किया और किस तरह से हमारी ज़िंदगी को आसान किया या मुश्किल किया अब तक के लिए इतना ही मज़ीद मुलाकात होगी आपसे अगले हफ्ते अपनी मेज़बान महपारा जबान को दीजिए इजाज़त अल्लाह हाफ़When the first batch was sent, I was standing in the same podium. So I was uh, at that time also here as chairman, Higher Education Commission. And then first batch was sent the love, and with the very excitement that how this experience is going to be. And uh, we are very thankful to Hungarian government, the people of Hungary, for this generous support. But see how the good nation. they share knowledge and they create knowledge by inviting other people so luckily when i went there so they were very kind enough that they they from 80 to they upgraded to 200 scholarship and then your minister was saying excellency when are you coming back i said excellency whenever you think of doubling 200 to 400 i will be available <laughs> So, Excellency, my message to your government: I am back again. So, whenever you say, I am willing to come. Our uh, executive director mentioned that I told my youth, today you are going Pakistani ambassador there. 
and when you will be returning after completing your education, you will be Hungarian ambassador in Pakistan. And that is the mutual respect we have to keep on doing this. And the, very rightly said by this young lady that whenever you go, remember your Pakistan. Remember you have your own heritage. Remember you have your own culture. Don't be shy. The important thing is today's era is to, we have to respect each other's culture. We have to respect each other's society. We have to give space to each other. We have to listen to each other. The better we should start focusing on positive things of each other's culture rather than identifying some negativity which is destroying our society and around the world. And my request to you will be the young people. These people have already paved path for you and they have already created an environment that Hungarian society is already accepting Pakistani students as a very dynamic and potential uh, student. You have to improve that perception which has already been created, not bringing it little down. So you have to work hard. As the Excellency Charge the Affairs said, very good institution there, very open uh, education policies, and they, I like their system of integrated approach basically. They want to complement each other. One institution is complementing other institution because the ultimate goal is how they are going to fulfill the requirement of their society or humanity or how they are going to make life easy for human beings, not focusing on one thing or another thing. So this is the thing you have to learn from there. This is a, the thing you have to learn from there that how you can work as a team in different culture, a different diversity environment, and then bring these good things back home so that we should be able to, tomorrow that we should offer rest of the country similar opportunity in Pakistan, inshallah. With these thoughts, ladies and gentlemen, I congratulate you to people who are selected on merit, and I congratulate their parents, and I wish uh, and then all these young ladies and gentlemen who are going for higher studies, best of luck. Rest assured, we'll be watching you. Rest assured, we'll be following you. Rest assured, we will be not letting you down. But you also have to do the same thing. Don't let your country down. Don't let your parents down. And believe me, if you want to be successful, remember who is on your behind praying for you, your mother, your father, your teachers, your brother and sister. Keep on respecting them, keep on following their footsteps, and improve it for next generation. The future of Pakistan is very bright because I can see very enlightening, very uh, full of light of your eyes, and big potential, inshallah, in you. The Pakistan government will always support you. Hungarian government is supporting you. Excellency, our regards to your people of Hungary and your government, and to your embassy for all kind of support you are providing us. Because my that point is still there, convey that, Whenever they say, I will come on. Umid yawaz aari hum. So, I hope that Allah Ta'ala will give us all the courage to work for Pakistan. Once again, Excellency, on behalf of the Government of Pakistan and Higher Education Commission, we are again thankful to the people of Hungary and Government of Hungary and our embassy in Pakistan from Hungary Government.
Hi guys. Welcome to University of Central Punjab, the center of your future. This is me Nurulain with Abdullah, Amira and Ahmed, senior year students here at UCT. And today we're going to show you around so you know how to make the best of your time here. Our purpose built campus has all the facilities and resources you need to succeed. The campus covers an area of almost 75 canals. The nine faculties are divided into three buildings. A, B and C. Right now, we are standing in Courtyard A, the picture-perfect spot of our campus. And I'll be showing you Building A, which was the first to be built back in 2010. It has all the pharmacy, electrical engineering labs, the IT department and the famous Clock Tower. And I will be telling you about Building B, which 2015. It houses an amazing library, media production facilities, science labs, a number of faculties as well as the pro-rector's office. And I will tell you about C building ke mein. with its rooftop cafe and a host of other facilities. This building was completed in 2018. And I'll be telling you about some important departments and facilities of our campus. So, let's get started guys. Follow me. Wait, aren't you forgetting something? What? DJ, let's hit it. begin with the auditorium, where all events are And can you believe it? It has a seating capacity of 400. The auditorium is a place where you will attend karenge, speaker sessions, conferences and guess what? Bohat sare theatre plays or musical performances. So, right next to the auditorium, we have a career services office where we help ensure the professional success of our students both during and after their studies. So make sure that you visit them visit for guidance and coaching regarding student exchange programs, jobs, internships and overall career development. Student Service Center or SSE is a part of Building A. It helps the student with program transfer, scholarships, fee submission, student registration and student portal assistance. We also have a girls hostel on our campus. It is centrally air conditioned, has unlimited Wi-Fi and many facilities facilities that you will not remember your home. Welcome to the Faculty of Engineering, which is behind A building. Ke peechhe hai. It contains 26 international standard labs for our electrical, mechanical and civil engineering students. Welcome to Building B. Let's start our tour at the library. Shh! Keep it low! Do you want to study alone or with friends? The library has over 40,000 books on all kinds of topics. And you will have access to different research databases. Ki. This building is C and I am in common room. This is a place where students can relax their busy schedules and relax their schedules and hang out with their friends. This is the sports complex. With 2 separate state-of-the-art gymnasium for men and women, 25-yard 4-lane swimming pool and host of other fun activities. UCP has many different clubs and societies which do different events and activities. And all of this is organized under the umbrella of DSA. The B building lobby is mostly filled with media, life sciences and social sciences students and is centered around UCP's Hall of Fame. We have maintained our winning streak of the HEC InterVersity Sports Championship since the past 10 years. We're the reigning champions. Hashtag trophy comes home. Did you know UCP was the only university based 24 7 radio station in Pakistan? Our radio facility helps our students in all aspects of audio production. Our state of the art production house and NLE labs provide our students with every possible resource to write, edit, and produce compelling and engaging content. Moving on, the English Language Center is also part of the B building, which is based on a blend of a language lab and self access center model where students can enroll themselves to improve their English language proficiency. It is also home to various general and science labs for practical and research work. Defense Council in the act of genocide is clearly a great breach of international law and it is clearly prohibited under the Geneva Conventions Article uh, 4 and RC Statute Article 6. Established as per the national standards of the High Court of Pakistan, the law moot room helps our law students sharpen their litigation skills. UCP has a dedicated webinar room where regular online sessions are organized with esteemed international speakers. And as the pandemic has shown us all that learning doesn't always take place in person, 
the UCP webinar room has indeed helped in making distance learning a breeze. Now, you can't do work in university and work in the university. Everyone needs a place to kick back, relax, and refuel. Though indoor cafes are not going to be able to has a rooftop cafe, which you can eat and hang out with your friends. Hi, I'm Ali Khan. Today, I'm A popular hangout and tea spot, the UCP Food Street is a one stop to satisfy all your sweet food cravings. I'm a Chai. Thank you. And cut! Well done, guys! The newest addition to UCP community, the MP Theatre is a place where you can attend acting classes and a lot of jamming sessions. Hey, how's it going? Great! Let's go! UCP aims to instill spirit of entrepreneurship and innovation among its students with the help of on-campus incubation center. The goal of the clique is to create innovative solutions and to provide students with the tools required to launch successful entrepreneurial ventures. We are just scratching the surface. We hope you enjoyed this brief tour of our campus and remember, here at UCP, if you have a passion, you can pursue it. If you want to try something new, you can experiment. And if you have a dream, you can follow it and make it the, the center, center of, of your future. future. बड़े चलो मुजाहिदो खुदा तुम्हारे साथ है तुम्हारे अज़मे बेकराम में कौम की हयात है बुलंद हौस ले रहे रुके नगर दिशे लहू तुम्हारे आज़म से है पाक सरज़मी की आबरू आगाज़ इस खुदा वाहिद के नाम से जो एहसास और ख्याल की सूरत हमारे आसपास मौजूद रहा करता है दरूद और ذات عظیم اس کی آل پر کہ جس کا سایہ رحمت ہمارے سروں پہ قائم و دائم ہے 6 सितंबर 2022 का एक रोशन ترین दिन है और आप सुन रहे हैं एपीएस डीसीआई इस्लामाबाद की خصوصی نشریات جو اپ تک پہنچائی جا رہی ہیں ایف ایم 102.2 کے توسط سے اور اس کے علاوہ اپ یہ تمام پروگرام ای ڈی یو ٹی وی ڈاٹ ایچ ای سی ڈاٹ جی او وی ڈاٹ پی کر بھی پی کے پر بھی سن سکتے ہیں اور دیکھ بھی سکتے ہیں اج کے پروگرام کا آغاز کرتے ہیں اور میرے ساتھ موجود ہیں مریم عمران اور حسن مجوکا جو آج کے پروگرام میں میرے معاون رہیں گے تو پروگرام کے آغاز میں بڑھتے ہیں مریم کی جانب جی مریم پروگرام کا آغاز ہم کیسے کر رہے ہیں جی پروگرام کے آغاز میں میں چاہوں گی کہ مریم شاہد حدیث نبوی کی روح سے شہادت کی اہمیت کو واضح کریں بسم اللہ الرحمن الرحیم حضرت ابو ہریرہ رضی اللہ تعالیٰ عنہ سے روایا ہے کہ رسول اللہ صلی اللہ علیہ وآلہ وسلم نے فرمایا قسم ہے اس ذات کی جس کے قبضہ قدرت میں میری جان ہے میری یہ آرزو اور تمنا ہے کہ میں اللہ تعالیٰ کی راہ میں قتل یعنی شہید کیا جاؤں پھر زندہ کیا جاؤں پھر شہید کیا جاؤں پھر زندہ کیا جاؤں پھر شہید کیا جاؤں پھر زندہ کیا جاؤں اور پھر شہید کیا جاؤں سبحان اللہ ماشاء اللہ اب قائد اعظم کے فرمان کو آپ تک پہنچانے کے لیے ہمارے ساتھ مشل موجود ہیں جی مشل قائد اعظم کا فرمان ہے ہم جتنی زمین سے اور قربانیاں دینا سیکھیں گے اتنی ہی زیادہ پاکیزہ خالص اور مضبوط قوم کی حیثیت سے ابھریں گے جیسے سونا آگ میں کندن بن جاتا ہے شکریہ بہت شکریہ جی جناب جیسا کہ آپ لوگ جانتے ہیں کہ آج یوم ستمبر یوم دفاع منایا جا رہا ہے چھ ستمبر اور چھ ستمبر کی مناسبت سے آج کچھ نغمات پیش کیے جائیں گے کچھ تحریریں آپ سے شیئر کی جائیں گی جی مریم پروگرام کے اگلے حصے میں ہمارے پاس کیا موجود ہے جی جیسے ہم سب جانتے ہیں کہ چھ ستمبر ایک ایسا وعدہ ہے جو کہ ایک قوم نے ایک ملک سے کیا اس سر زمین کو مضبوط بنانے کا وعدہ محفوظ بنانے کا وعدہ لہذا میں اس پروگرام کا باقاعدہ آغاز اے پی ایس ڈی سی آئی کے ٹیچر سر سنان کو بلا کر کرنا چاہوں گی کہ وہ اپنی خوبصورت آواز میں نغمے کی صورت میں ہمارے عظیم شہدا کو خراج تحسین پیش کریں 
ऐरा हक के शहीदों वफा की तस्वीरों तुम्हें वतन की हवाए सलाम कहती हैं ऐरा हक के शहीदों लगाने आग जो आए थे आशियाने में वो शोले अपने लहू से बुझा दिए तुमने बचा लिया है यतीमी से कितने फूलों को सुहाग कितनी बाहरों के रख लिए तुमने तुम्हें चमन की फजाए सलाम कहती हैं के शहीदों थैंक यू सो मच हक के शहीदों वफा की तस्वीरों तुम्हें वतन की हवाएं सलाम कहती हैं प्रोग्राम के दूसरे हिस्से की जानब बढ़ते हैं हमारे पास एक बहुत खूबसूरत किताब हमारे शहदा मौजूद है और आज इस किताब में से शहदा की तहरीर तहरीरों के हवाले से कुछ इकतवास पेश किए जाएंगे और इसके लिए मैं बढ़ना चाहूँगा हसन मजोका की तरफ कि वो आएँ और हसन मजोका कौन कौन से अहबाब हमारे साथ मौजूद हैं इकतवास को पेश करने के लिए हमारे फौजी जवान जो इस अर्ज पाक पर कुर्बान हुए उनकी कुछ वसीयतें और तहरीरें हमारे पास मौजूद हैं जो प्रोग्राम के इस हिस्से में सुनने वालों तक पहुँचाई जाएंगी इसलिए मेरे पास सबसे पहला नाम कैप्टन इकबाल खान शहीद का है जिनको उनकी खिदमात के सिले में हिलार जरत के एजाज़ से नवाजा गया और इसीलिए मेरे साथ मौजूद हैं ए पी एस डी सी आई के होनहार तलब इल मोहम्मद इब्राहिम मैं कैप्टन इकबाल खान मेरी शहादत के बाद इन वसीयतों पर अमल करना इंतहाई ज़रूरी है मेरे ज़िम्मे सोलह रोज़े है जो मुख्तलफ़ मौक़ों पर सफ़र या बीमारी की वजह से मैं नहीं रख सका इनका फ़दिया अदा किया जाए 24 मई 1980 को मैंने बैंक से कर्ज़ा लिया था मेरे ख़्याल में तकरीबन 900 रुपए थे ये कर्ज़ा बीएससी स्टूडेंट्स को मिला करता था मेरे ख़्याल में कुछ इस किस्म का कर्ज़ा था कि तलब इलम तलीम मुकम्मल करने के बाद जब सर्विस शुरू करता है यानी जब उसको नौकरी मिल जाती है तो ये कर्ज़ा वापस देना होता है मेरी शहादत के बाद जुम्मा चहलम और साल वगैरह कुछ भी ना किया जाए क्योंकि यह सब कुछ बिद्दत है कुरान और हदीस से ये चीज़ें साबित नहीं हैं बल्कि ये हमने हिंदुओं से अपनाई है खैरत किसी भी वक्त की जा सकती है मेरी शहादत के बाद अगर हुकूमत से कोई पैसे वगैरह मिल जाए तो उसमें से मेरा कर्ज़ा वगैरह और रोज़ों का फ़दिया अदा करने के बाद अगर चालीस हज़ार या उससे कम पैसे बच जाते हैं तो वो पूरी रकम मेरी कज़ा नमाज़ों के गुफारा के तौर पर गुरबा और मसाकिन में तकसीम किए जाए पैंतालीस हज़ार से वो ऊपर जितने भी पैसे बचते हैं वो मेरे वालदे को मिलने चाहिए पाँच हज़ार रुपये बतौर ज़क़़त जो कोई भी मेरे मरने मेरी शहादत के बाद मेरे साथ एहसान करना चाहता है और मेरी रूह को खुश करना चाहता है तो वो जितना ज़्यादा हो सके दरूद शरीफ पढ़े और सवाब मेरी रूह के लिए बख्श दे आहोजारी और रोने पीटने से मुझे कोई फ़ायदा नहीं होगा और मेरी रूह को कोई खुशी नहीं होगी शुक्रिया अब आपको बाबर कराता चलूँ कि ये प्रोग्राम आप 
اے پی ایس ڈی سی آئی کی خصوصی نشریات ہیں یوم دفاع کے حوالے سے جو آپ ایف ایم ون او ٹو پوائنٹ ٹو کے توسط سے سن رہے ہیں اور اس کے علاوہ ای ڈی یو ٹی وی ایچ ای سی ڈاٹ جی او وی ڈاٹ پی کے پر آپ یہ پروگرام براہ راست دیکھ بھی سکتے ہیں جی مریم اس کے بعد ہمارے پاس کیا موجود ہے جی بالکل اور یہ میں آپ کو بتاتی چلوں کہ آج ہمارے لیے ایک بہت فخر اور عظمت کی بات ہے کہ ہمارے ساتھ ایک شہید فوجی کرنل مجیب کی بہادر بیٹی زرخرف موجود ہے جو اپنے والد کے لیے دل کی گہرائیوں سے ایک پویم پیش کرے گی جی زخرف السلام علیکم مائی نیم از زخرف مجیب اینڈ ایم اے پراؤڈ ڈاٹر آف کرنل مجیب الرحمان شہید مائی فادر واز اے ویری بریو مین اے مین ہو سیکریفائز ہز لائف فار دس کنٹری آئی لوڈ ہیم ویری ڈیئرلی اینڈ دیٹس وائی آئی روٹ اے پوائم فار ہیم اینڈ آئی وڈ لائک ٹو شیئر ود ایوری بڈی ڈیئر بابا یو ویر مائی سن شائن ون اٹ رین یو کورڈ می ود یور لو آئی ہگ ڈیو اینڈ اٹ واز وارم آئی لو ڈے بٹ ناؤ یور گون یو لیفٹ می ان دا ڈاسٹ اینڈ یو ہیپی اپ دیر آئی وش آئی کڈ سی یو جسٹ ون مور ٹائم او مائی رے آف سن یو ہیو بیکم اے بیکن دا شائنز اوور دا نیشن تھینک یو بہت شکریہ بیٹا بہت شکریہ جی اس کے بعد ہم بڑھتے ہیں اگلا پیغام کس کا ہے جی آپ کے پاس میں آپ کو یاد دلاتا چلوں کہ یہاں اے پی ایس ڈی سی آئی کے طلبہ موجود ہیں جو کچھ پیغامات سنانے کے لیے سماعتوں تک پہنچانے کے لیے موجود ہیں میں بلانا چاہوں گا دیا نور کو چھ ستمبر کا دن پاکستان کے دفاع اور عسکری قیادت کو مضبوط کرنے کی یاد دہانی ہے مادر وطن کا دفاع کرنے والی افواج پاکستان بری بحری یا فضائی ہو ان کا کردار مثالی رہا ہے پاک دھرتی کی خاطر شہید ہونے والے مجاہدوں کے خون سے آج دھرتی کی رنگینیاں دبالا ہیں جو ہمیشہ جات و بہادری پامردی اور تجدید عہد کا پیغام دیتا ہے شکریہ اب پیغام دینے کے لیے ہمارے ساتھ فاطمہ موجود ہیں السلام علیکم میرا نام فاطمہ آصف ہے اور میں جماعت ہفتم ڈی سے تعلق رکھتی ہوں زندہ قوم تاریخ کے اوراق پر ایسے ان ان مٹ نقوش چھوڑ جاتی ہیں کہ لوگ ان پر چل کر اپنی منزلیں بہ آسانی بنا سکتے ہیں اور ماضی کی روشنی میں حال کی راہوں کو متعین کرتے ہیں چھ ستمبر ہمیں اس بات کا پیغام دیتا ہے کہ ہر آنے والی مشکل گھڑی میں ہمت و حوصلے کا مظاہرہ کرتے ہوئے نمٹا جا سکتا ہے ہر پاکستانی اپنی فوج کے دفاع پر فخر کرے اور یقین رکھے کہ پاک فوج ہر محاذ پر سرخرو ہوگی پاکستان زندہ باد شکریہ بہت خوبصورت پیغام دے رہی تھی آپ اور احباب میں ایک بات آپ کو بتاتا چلوں کہ ہمارے ساتھ کچھ ایسے طلباء بھی موجود ہیں جو اپنی خوبصورت آوازوں میں آپ تک اپنے احساسات اپنے جذبات آپ تک پہنچائیں گے سو نغمات کا سلسلہ شروع کرتے ہیں تو حسن ہمارے ہمارے ساتھ سب سے پہلے نغمہ پیش کرنے کے لیے کون موجود ہے میں ادیبہ کو بلانا چاہوں گا جو ہمارے ساتھ نغمہ پیش کریں گی
मेरे वतन की सारी मोहब्बतें सारी चाहतें हमारे सीनों में मौजूद हैं और इसके बाद हमारे साथ गुफ्तु का गुफ्तु करने के लिए कुछ बच्चे मौजूद हैं जी जी बिल्कुल प्रोग्राम के इस हिस्से में हमारे साथ कुछ तलबा मौजूद हैं जो कि 6 सितंबर से लेकर अब तक के तमाम अजीम वाक़ात को अपनी गुफ्तु का हिस्सा बनाएंगे लेकिन उस जानब बढ़ने से पहले मेरे जहन में एक शेर आया है जो आपकी खिदमत में पेश करना चाहूँगी शहीदान वतन के हौसले थे दीद के काबिल शहीदान वतन के हौसले थे दीद के काबिल वहाँ पर शुक्र करते थे जहाँ पर सब्र मुश्किल था लिहाजा प्रोग्राम के अगले हिस्से में जो तलबा मेरे साथ मौजूद हैं उनमें मोहम्मद हमजा और सारा यूनस शामिल हैं तो चलिए उनकी गुफ्तु सुनते हैं असलकुम मेरे साथियों अगर हम 6 सितंबर 1965 के दिल को याद करें तो हमारा दिल जज्बे से भर जाता है और फौजी नौजवानों की लाजवाल कुर्बानियों की दास्तानें आंखें नम कर देती हैं जंग सितंबर का यह तस्करा दिलों को गरमाता जोश व जज्बे को उभारता और यकीन और ईमान को ताज़ा कर देता है तारीख़ आलम में कभी ना भूलने वाले इस काबिल फ़ख्र दिन के हवाले से आज कुछ पेचीदा पेचीद निकात जेर बहस लाए जाएंगे 6 सितंबर को पाकिस्तान की 22 करोड़ आवाम योम दिफा पाकिस्तान मनाते हुए अपने कौमी हीरोज़ और बहादुर अफवाज की शहादत और बेमिसाल कुर्बानियों को खराज अकीदत पेश करेंगे जिन्होंने उन्नीस की जंग में अपनी जानों का नजराना देकर दुश्मन को पाकिस्तान पर कब्जे के इरादों को खाक में मिला दिया अगर हम 6 सितंबर के पसे मंजर की जानब नज़र दौड़ाते हैं तो मालूम होता है किस तरह हमारे बुजदिल मक्कार और अयार दुश्मन ने अपनी रिवायती बुजदली का मुजाहरा करते हुए रात की तारीखी में हमारे वतन अजीज़ पर हमला कर दिया था पर हमारी बेदार और ज़िंदा कौम ने इस कौम पर कौमी यकजहती का बेमिसाल मुजाहरा करते हुए अपनी अफवाज की मैत में दुश्मन के नाकाम अजाइम को खाक में मिला दिया दुश्मन फ़ौज का इरादा था कि वह सुबह का नाश्ता लाहौर में आकर करेंगे जब हमला हुआ तो पाकिस्तानी अफवाज और रेंजर्स ने पूरी हिम्मत और जवा मर्दी के साथ दुश्मन का मुकाबला किया फौजी जवानों और अफसरों ने अपनी जानें कुर्बान करके दुश्मन के कदम वहीं रोक दिए पाक फजाइया ने फौरी तौर पर जुरत व बहादरी का मुजाहरा करते हुए दुश्मन की गाड़ियों और फौजों पर हमला किया पाक फजाइया का हमला ये इतना शदीद था कि दुश्मन को संभलने तक का मौका ही ना मिला और वह जी टी रोड पर अपनी लाशें और साजो सामान छोड़कर भाग गए तोहद की अमानत सीनों में है हमारे तोहद की अमानत सीनों में है हमारे आसान नहीं मिटाना नामो निशा हमारा इसी तरह के कुछ खूबसूरत इशार पेश करने के लिए हमारे साथ मौजूद हैं मरियम शाहिद हिम्मत अभी झुकी नहीं मेरे हौसले अभी बुलंद हैं हिम्मत अभी झुकी नहीं मेरे हौसले अभी बुलंद हैं मुझे हार जीत से गर्ज नहीं मेरी जंग थी सो मैं लड़ गया बहुत खूब बहुत खूब आपको बताते चलें कि ये ए की नशरियात आप तक एफ एम के तवसत से पहुंचाई जा रही है इसके अलावा आप ई डी यू टी वी पे भी देख और सुन सकते हैं पैगाम के सिलसिले को आगे बढ़ाने चलें तो मैं जरदिश को चाहूँगी कि वो आए और हमें एक पैगाम सुनाए सामीन कराम हम नहीं भूले शहदा गाजी और बहादुर पाकिस्तानियों ने शहदा गाजी और बहादुर पाकिस्तानियों ने मादर वतन पाकिस्तान के तहफ़ और सलामती के लिए अजीम कुर्बानियाँ दी जो के नकबल फरामोश हैं आज के आज के दिन मैं एक पैगाम दूँगी पाकिस्तान का दिफा और मजहबी सलामती हमारा कौमी फरीजा है इसके लिए हम जान कुर्बान करने से गुरेज नहीं करेंगे शुक्रिया नगमात का सिलसिला आगे जारी रखते हुए हमारे साथ ए पी की टीचर मैम नादिया मौजूद हैं मैं उनको दावत दूंगा ए वतन के सजीले
کے سجیلے جوانوں میرے نغمے تمہارے لیے ہیں میڈم نور جہاں کے گائے ہوئے ان ملی نغمے کو بہت خوبصورت انداز میں پیش کر رہی تھی میم ناتیا اور مریم اس کے بعد ہمارے ساتھ کون موجود ہیں اور کیا پیش کرنے جا رہی ہیں جی بالکل پرگرام کے سسلے کو آگے بڑھاتے چلیں اب کیپٹن سرور شہید کے حوالے سے کچھ تاثرات ہمارے ساتھ کچھ تاثرات ہمارے ساتھ پیش کرنی کے لیے حرین موجود ہیں چلتا ہے خنجر تو چلے میری رگوں پر چلتا ہے خنجر تو چلے میری رگوں پر خودی بیچ کے میں اپنی جک نہیں سکتا مٹنے کو تو یہ دنیا بھی مٹ سکتی ہے لیکن مٹنے کو تو یہ دنیا بھی مٹ سکتی ہے لیکن تاریخ کے اوراق سے میں مٹ نہیں سکتا راجہ محمد سرور پاک فوج کے عظیم شہدہ میں سے ایک ہیں راجہ محمد سرور دس نومبر انیس سو دس کو تحصیل گجر خان زلے راول پنڈی کے گاؤں سنگوڑی میں ایک راجپوت گھرانے میں پیدا ہوئے انہوں نے فوج میں بطور سپاہی شمولیت اختیار کی ان کی فوجی خدمات کے پیش نظر انیس سو چھیالیس میں انہیں کیپٹن کے عہدے پر ترقی دے دی گئی انیس سو اٹھالیس میں جب وہ پنجاب ریجمنٹ کے سیکنڈ بٹالین میں کمپنی کمانڈر کے عہدے پر خدمات انجام دے رہے تھے انہیں کشمیر میں آپریشن پر معمور کیا گیا ستائیس جولائی انیس سو اٹھالیس کو انہوں نے کشمیر کے اوڑی سیکٹر میں دشمن کی اہم فوجی پوزیشن پر حملہ کیا دشمن نے جوابی کاروائی کی اور زوردار حملہ کیا راجہ محمد سرور دشمن کے مورچے کے قریب پہنچے تو معلوم ہوا کہ دشمن نے مورچے کو خاردار تاروں سے محفوظ کیا ہوا ہے انہوں نے دشمن کی گولیوں کی پرواہ کیے بغیر تاروں کو کار ڈالا اسی دوران دشمن نے مشین گن کا رخ آپ کی طرف موڑا اور آپ کا جسم گولیوں سے چھلنی ہو گیا آپ نے جامع شہادت نوش کیا ستائیس اکتوبر انیس سو انسٹھ کو آپ کی شاندار خدمات کے اعتراف میں آپ کو نشان حیدر کا عزاز دیا گیا ہے آپ پاکستان کے پہلے جامباز ہیں جنہیں نشان حیدر کے عزاز سے نوازا گیا یہ کس, سے, کس نے ہم سے لہو کا خراج پھر مانگا یہ کس نے ہم سے لہو کا خراج پھر مانگا ابھی تو سوئے تھے مقتل کو سرخرو کر کے شکریہ میرے وطن کے عقید تیرا پیار تجھ پہ نثار کر دوں محبتوں کے یہ سلسلے پہ شمار تجھ پہ نثار کر دوں میرے وطن میرے وطن میرے وطن میرے پس میں ہو تو تیری حفاظت کروں میں ایسے ہزار سے تجھے کو بچا کے رکھوں بہار تجھ پہ نثار کر دوں میرے وطن میرے وطن تیری محبت میں موت آئے تو اس سے بڑھ کر نہیں ہے خواہش میں ایک جا کیا ہزار ہوں تو ہزار تجھ پہ 
निसार कर दूँ मेरे वतन मेरे वतन बहुत खूब बहुत खूब पैगाम के सिलसिले को आगे बढ़ाते हुए हमारे साथ मौजूद हैं मुस्फिरा छः सितंबर का दिन पाकिस्तान की तारीख में कभी भुलाया नहीं जा सकता ये दिन पूरी पाकिस्तानी कौम और ख़ास तौर पर अफवाज पाकिस्तान के लिए काबिल फख्र दिन है यही वो वक्त था जब हर मुखलिस पाकिस्तानी ने अपनी जान की परवाह किए बगैर मुल्क का दिफा किया था इसीलिए हर साल 6 सितंबर का दिन हर वतन दोस्त योम दिफा पाकिस्तान पाकिस्तान के तौर पर मनाता है जंग सितंबर पाकिस्तानी कौम और और अफवाज पाकिस्तान के लिए अल्लाह की तरफ से एक बहुत बड़ा इम्तहान था जिसमें अल्हम्दुलिल्लाह ये कौम और इस कौम के बहादुर सिपाही पूरी तरह से कामयाब ठहरे वाह खूब क्या जोश और खरोश के साथ इस बच्ची ने अपने जज्बात का इजहार किया है प्रोग्राम को आगे ले जाने से पहले आपको बताते चलूं कि ए पी की ये नशरियात आप तक एफ एम के तवसत से पहुंचाई जा रही है एफ के अलावा आप ये नशरियात edutv.hec.gov.pk पर देख और सुन भी सकते हैं शायरी के लिए चंद अशार आपकी खिदमत में पेश करने के लिए मैं अब्दुलरहमान को दावत दूंगी दुश्मन के कदम आए अगर पाक वतन में हम लोग सुला दें उसे मिट्टी के कफन में बन जाएंगे बातिल के लिए कह रहे इलाही हम मिलत इस्लाम के जाम बास सिपाही लहराएंगे हर हाल में इस्लाम का परचम रोके हमें बढ़ने से ये दुश्मन में कहा दम हम नूर का पैगाम वो बातिल की स्याही हम मिलत इस्लाम के जाम बास सिपाही शाबाश बहुत खूब डिस्कशन के प्रोग्राम को आगे पहुंचाने से पहले मैं आपकी खिदमत में एक शेर अर्ज करना चाहूंगी खुदा करे कि मेरी अर्ज पाक पे उतरे वो फसल गुल जिसे अंदेशा इस जवाल ना हो गुफ्तु की तकरीब को आप तक पहुंचाने के लिए मैं हसन मुझो का और मरियम शाहिद को दावत दूंगी बड़ी फौज ने खुद को संभाल कर इस कदर बर्क रफ्तारी से जवाबी हमला किया कि भारतीय फौज के आसान खता हो गए लाहौर के इस मार्के में बरकी के अहम मुकाम पर हिंदुस्तानी फौज ने सख्त दबाव डालकर नहर पार करने की कोशिश की लेकिन मेजर अजीज भट्टी और उनकी कंपनी ने उन्हें बारूद के शोलों में घेर लिया मेजर अजीज भट्टी दम लिए बगैर लड़ते रहे और लड़ते लड़ते एक गोला लगने से शहीद हो गए कुर्बानियों का ये सिलसिला आब जरी से लिखने के काबिल है इसी रोज पाक फजाइया के शाहीन एम एम आलम ने हमला करके एक मिनट में दुश्मन के पांच जंगी जहाज तबाह कर दिए जो अपनी नोयत का वाद कारनामा है तहम मकार दुश्मन की साजिशों का सिलसिला यहाँ ना रुका और सन उन्नीस सौ इकहत्तर में दुश्मन ने तकरीबी तंजीम मकती बहानी के साथ मिलकर मशरकी पाकिस्तान में अमन व अमान की सूरत हाल को खराब करने की कोशिश की जिसके नतीजे में जंग का आगाज हुआ इस जंग में पाकिस्तान की बड़ी फौज के साथ साथ बहरी और पाक फिजाइया ने भी अजम हिम्मत की लाजवाल दास्तान रकम की तीन दिसंबर उन्नीस सौ इकहत्तर को दुश्मन के दस स्क्वाडर्स ने पाकिस्तान फिजाइया के अकलौते स्क्वाडर पर हमला किया जिसके नतीजे में अपने कई ही जहाज तबाह करवा बैठा Hi guys welcome to University of Central Punjab the center of your future this is me Nurulain with Abdullah Amira and Ahmed senior year students here at UCT and today we're going to show you around so you know how to make the best of your time here our purpose built campus has all the facilities and resources you need to succeed the campus covers an area of almost 75 canals the nine faculties are divided into three buildings a b and c Right now we are standing in courtyard A the picture perfect spot of our campus and I'll be showing you building A which was the first to be built back in 2010 it has all the pharmacy electrical engineering labs the IT department and the famous clock tower and I will be telling you about building B jo ke 2015 mein bani thi it houses an amazing library media production facilities science labs a number of faculties as well as the pro rector's office
Hi guys. Welcome to University of Central Punjab, the center of your future. This is me Nurulain with Abdullah, Amira and Ahmed, senior year students here at UCT. And today we're going to show you around so you know how to make the best of your time here. Our purpose-built campus has all the facilities and resources you need to succeed. The campus covers an area of almost 75 canals. The nine faculties are divided into three buildings. A, B, and C. Right now, we are standing in courtyard A, the picture-perfect spot of our campus. And I'll be showing you building A, which was the first to be built back in 2010. It has all the pharmacy, electrical engineering labs, the IT department, and the famous clock tower. And I will be telling you about building B, Joke 2015. It houses an amazing library, media production facilities, science lab, a number of faculties as well as the pro-rector's office. And I will tell you about C building. With its rooftop cafe and a host of other facilities, this building was completed in 2018. And I'll be telling you about some important departments and facilities of our campus. So, let's get started guys. Follow me. Wait, aren't you forgetting something? What? what? DJ, let's hit it. We begin with the auditorium, where all events are. And can you believe it? It has a seating capacity of 400. Auditorium is a such place where you can attend karenge, speaker sessions, conferences, and Guess what? Many theatre plays and musical performances. So, right next to the auditorium, we have a career services office where we help ensure the professional success of our students both during and after their studies. So make sure that you visit them visit for guidance and coaching regarding student exchange programs, jobs, internships and overall career development. Student Service Centre or SSE is a part of Building A. It helps the student with program transfer, scholarships, fee submission, student registration, and student portal assistance. We also have a girls' hostel on our campus. It is centrally air-conditioned, has unlimited Wi-Fi, and many facilities facilities that you will not remember your home. Welcome to the Faculty of Engineering, which is behind A building. Ke peechhe hai. It contains 26 international standard labs for our electrical, mechanical, and civil engineering students. Welcome to Building B. Let's start our tour at the library. Shh, keep it low. Aap akele padna chahte ho ya doston ke saath? The library has over 40,000 books on all kinds of topics. Aur aapke paas access hogi different research databases ki. Ye building C hai aur main common room mein khada hu. Ye ek aisi jagah hai jahan students apne busy schedules se break leke relax kar sakte hain aur apne doston ke saath hang out kar sakte hain. Ye hai sports complex. With two separate state-of-the-art gymnasium for men and women, 25-yard four-lane swimming pool, and host of other fun activities. UCP में बहुत सारे different clubs and societies हैं जो different events and activities करवाते हैं. And all of this is organized under the umbrella of DSA. The B building lobby is mostly filled with media, life sciences, and social sciences students, and is centered around UCP's Hall of Fame. We have maintained our winning streak of the HEC InterVersity Sports Championship since the past 10 years. We're the reigning champions. Hashtag trophy comes home. Did you know UCP was the only university based 24 7 radio station in Pakistan? Our radio facility helps our students in all aspects of audio production. Our state-of-the-art production house and NLE labs provide our students with every possible resource to write, edit and produce compelling and engaging content. Moving on, the English Language Centre is also part of the B building, which is based on a blend of a language lab and self-access centre model where students can enrol themselves to improve their English language proficiency. It is also home to various general and science labs for practical and research work. 
Defense Council the act of genocide is clearly a great breaches of international law and it's clearly prohibited under Geneva Conventions at, uh, Article 4 and IC Statute Article 6. Uh, so, uh, Established as per the national standards of the High Court of Pakistan, the law move room helps our law students sharpen their litigation skills. UCP has a dedicated webinar room where regular online sessions are organized with esteemed international speakers. And as the pandemic has shown us all that learning doesn't always take place in person, the UCP webinar room has indeed helped in making distance learning a breeze. Now, when you come to university, you can't do work Everyone needs a place to kick back, relax and refuel. Though indoor cafes are not allowed, Building C has a rooftop cafe where you can eat fun food and hang out with your friends. A popular hangout and tea spot, the UCP Food Street is a one-stop to satisfy all your street food cravings. I'm okay. Thank you. And cut! Well done guys! The newest addition to UCP community, the MP Theatre is a place where you can attend acting classes and many jamming sessions. Hey, how's it going? Great! Let's go! UCP aims to instill spirit of entrepreneurship and innovation among its students with the help of on-campus incubation centre. The goal of the clique is to create innovative solutions and to provide students with the tools required to launch successful entrepreneurial ventures. We are just scratching the surface. We hope you enjoyed this brief tour of our campus and remember, here at UCP, if you have a passion, you can pursue it. If you want to try something new, you can experiment. And if you have a dream, you can follow it and make it the, the center, center of, of your future. future. Hi guys! Hi. Welcome to University of Central Punjab, the center of your future. This is me Nurulain with Abdullah, Amira and Ahmed, senior year students here at UCP. And today we're going to show you around, so you know how to make the best of your time here. Our purpose-built campus has all the facilities and resources you need to succeed. The campus covers an area of almost 75 canals. The nine faculties are divided into three buildings, A, B and C. Right now, we are standing in Courtyard A, the picture-perfect spot of our campus. And I'll be showing you Building A, which was the first to be built back in 2010. It has all the pharmacy, electrical engineering labs, the IT department, and the famous Clock Tower. And I will be telling you about Building B, which was built in 2015. 
It houses an amazing library, media production facilities, science labs, a number of faculties as well as the pro-rector's office. And I will tell you about C-Building. With its rooftop cafe and a host of other facilities, this building was completed in 2018. And I'll be telling you about some important departments and facilities of our campus. So, let's get started guys. Follow me. Wait, aren't you forgetting something? What? DJ, let's hit it. begin with the auditorium, where all events are. And can you believe it? It has a seating capacity of 400. The auditorium is such a place where you will attend speaker sessions, conferences and guess what? There are many theatre plays and musical performances. So, right next to the auditorium, we have a career services office where we help ensure the professional success of our students both during and after their studies. So make sure that you visit them visit for guidance and coaching regarding student exchange programs, jobs, internships and overall career development. Student Service Center or SSE is a part of Building A. It helps the student with program transfer, scholarships, fee submission, student registration and student portal assistance. We also have a girls hostel on our campus. It is centrally air-conditioned, has unlimited Wi-Fi and many facilities facilities that you will not remember your home. Welcome to the Faculty of Engineering, which is behind A building. Ke behind. It contains 26 international standard labs for our electrical, mechanical and civil engineering students. Welcome to Building B. Let's start our tour at the library. Shh! Keep it low. Do you want to study alone or with friends? The library has over 40,000 books on all kinds of topics. And you will have access to different research databases. Ki. This building is C and I am in common room. This is a place where students can relax from their busy schedules and relax with their friends and hang out with their friends. This is a sports complex with two separate state-of-the-art gymnasium for men and women, a 25-yard four-lane swimming pool and a host of other fun activities. There are many different clubs and clubs and societies that do different events and activities. And all of this is organized under the umbrella of DSA. The B building lobby is mostly filled with media, life sciences and social sciences students and is centered around UCP's Hall of Fame. We have maintained our winning streak of the HEC InterVersity Sports Championship since the past 10 years. We're the reigning champions. Hashtag trophy comes home. Did you know UCP was the only university based 24 7 radio station in Pakistan? Our radio facility helps our students in all aspects of audio production. Our state-of-the-art production house and NLE labs provide our students with every possible resource to write, edit and produce compelling and engaging content. Moving on, the English Language Centre is also part of the B building, which is based on a blend of a language lab and self-access centre model, where students can enrol themselves to improve their English language proficiency. It is also home to various general and science labs for practical and research work. Defence Council in the act of genocide is clearly a great breach of international law and it is clearly prohibited under the Geneva Conventions at uh, Article 4 and ICC Statute in Article 6. Uh, so, uh, Established as per the National Statute. Uh, good morning to all of you. Uh, I would like to request you all to write a committee for the National Anthem.
set up a dedicated research block for facilitation of its researchers, providing access to 50,000 plus ebooks at 100 and be dedicated to internet. We have successfully awarded degrees to more than 2,700 students at La Lourdes and universities for convocations. Coming to these great journals, LGU has achieved an unprecedented benchmark of publishing seven research journals at Campus Magazine in the last year. The number of research entries has successfully gone up from just 12 to over 500 and coming. Our greatest achievement is the approval of Office of Research, Innovation, and Commercialization for a high quality research paper published in General of Knowledge Management. Dr. Ramon Rajiv, Dean of Social and National Sciences, LGU has been awarded the Emerald Literary Award for Excellence, Outstanding Paper Award 2020. From 2017 till date, LGU has hosted several international and national conferences. Hello, I'm Lori Bolster, and I'm happy to be here. Thank you so much for having us. Achieving noteworthy success. We assign long-term awardees to national and international organizations and foundations, including, but not limited to, CSO Global Forum, e Academy Contract, Connectors Institute of International Skills, Pearson B Tech Qualifications, and CMUSH, among others. The university is in the process of seeking agreement in terms with high-ranking educational institutions in Germany, Finland, Australia, United Kingdom, and the United States of America. LGU has been declared as the best university by virtue of the highest entries to hold foundations business idea international competition, through which three of our students-led teams qualify for regional finals in Melbourne and Toronto, who secured the first position out of 86 universities and 180 teams competing at NERC, Pakistan's largest robotic competition. In year 2019, LGU secured three positions in all competing categories and got a first position in the modular category. LGU, senior student, was selected as one of the six finalists out of 7,000 plus who went on to secure a second position in Huawei Regional Finals held in China. LGU consists of 18 plus clubs and societies functioning under the student affairs and counseling department. Media professionalism. 
and that she became the official media partner for HDCT to host live transmissions on a weekly basis and received media equipment worth rupees two million from HDC. As a matter of great honor and pride, LZ has been shortlisted at the provincial level for the commencement of the live transmission of Microsoft and Magica, and stood first in broadcasting the live transmission at a national level. Assalamu alaikum everyone, my name is Jamal and we are live from the Broadway University. Recently, LZ has won first prize in the Radio Pakistan Mobile competition and also achieved third position in short film competition organized by the Population Welfare Department. LCD became runners up at the Lons Music Fest 2022, where the bands achieved a remarkable position in Eastern Sydney. There is a University Music Society got second position at UCD Dakar 2022, where the bands also LGU was a winner in Eastern Sydney at UCD Dakar. At CMUCH, all of the year 2022, the Hawaii Girls and University Music Society got second position in Battle of the Bands and also won Best in the Class Award. Our latest project, Education for Everyone, will enable students from all backgrounds in the country to obtain quality higher education at zero cost. The Hawaii Girls and University is striving for excellence and looks forward to empowering the youth for the better future of the nation. Became the face of the new school during its inception and establishment. 
He has established executive leader experience with over 23 years in higher education and over 15 years in legal affairs and administration with responsibility and oversight for budgets up to about uh, $300 million. Mr. Dina, can we have, have you with us on stage, please? That was a very good effort. Sir. Our second panelist for the day is Dr. Hassan Hassan Dawuba, a seasoned public management and investment specialist. Dr. Hassan brings with him years of enriched experience of working on projects and new initiatives, especially those involving Chinese state owned and private enterprises. He has been the CEO of KP Global Construction and Technology and Special Economic Zones Authority. Also, I will call the person for the he is a doing business initiative with the KP government. He has worked with international organizations including IOC, the World Bank, and also addressed issues of poverty and education, family partnership, and employment generation addressing SDGs through the policy articulation. He has been the focal person of KP programs for national SME and commerce policy formulation, as well as regulatory, design, and economic outreach initiative of the government. Dr. Hassan was also the lead of KP's initiative at the Dubai Expo 2020. Previously, as a project director of China Pakistan Economic Corridor 2016-19, he was responsible for overall coordination and progress review uh, for the entire CPAC portfolio. While serving as a diplomat from the year 2009 to 2013 in the Embassy of Pakistan, Beijing, China, and Hanoi, Vietnam. He was awarded the commemorative medal by the Chinese Ministry of Defense for improving relations between both countries. Currently, he is an associate professor at Bayer University, where he is engaged in sharing his knowledge to current project managers. Dr. Bas has a PhD in management sciences, and his research areas include Chinese government models, globalization and regional initiative, cross-cultural projects in NCC's development in a multicultural environment. In order to attract points, you have to build a nest first. It is vision for investment in new initiatives and makes uh, it his genius. So can you have the stage, Our third panelist today is Dr. Zahir Riyaz. Dr. Zahir Riyaz is currently working as an associate professor at the Faculty of Business Administration in the School of Economics, Pakistan. His primary contribution has been in knowledge and knowledge at renowned international research venues. He has authored several research papers in international journals of higher repute and impact. Dr. Riyaz has successfully supervised several PhD and FL candidates. He has also served as an editor of the Inquirer General of Business. He is a member of the editorial review boards of various high impact research journals. His area of teaching and research in trusts are international business, organization, and management, corporate social responsibility, and strategic management. Secondly, I'm going to say please. I would like to add on here that Dr. Zahir is one of those people in the fraternity whom I have never found uh, lacking of any initiatives and who would always be very positive to extend his support and help whenever, if ever, and no matter how late and at how short a notice I will reach out to him, he is definitely going to provide me with a solution. So can you please give him a big round of applause? My third panelist today is Mr. Arvind Kiel. Mr. Arvind Kiel has an over 20 years of experience in social development and education sectors. He has worked with UNICEF, UNESCO, and JICA in national development capacities. He has served as a member of the National Reform Committee of Education, along with the Federal Education Ministry and Provincial Departments of Education in Pakistan. He has successfully read the reforms in one form of education in Pakistan that resulted in the development and setting up of net policy, policies, standards, curriculum, teaching learning material, assessment, and equivalency mechanisms 
in case of the minority members to AMP and MIS. Can you have those states up? My fifth uh, panelist for the day is Mr. Hamed Hedda, who is a manufacturing director at the Labor. Mr. Hedda has been working with the diverse experience and has been working with the Indian personal care, beverages, and has been actively in corporate function. Pragmatic leader driven by purpose, entrepreneurial mindset, and passion for people. He is highly skilled at coaching, mentoring, and leading the future talent and is effectively handling large teams. He is part of the Society of Leadership team for Yuri Pakistan. Mr. Hedda is part of expertise to build, train, motivate, and lead different teams in supply chain management, manufacturing, quality assurance, safety, manufacturing excellence, engineering and automation, and digitalization. He is manufacturing portfolio as the actual category of the world of Pakistan, with a combined team strength of over, of over 800 people. Can you have more stage? gratitude on behalf of the entire department and the organizing committee for giving us your time and being here with us today. I would like to start with a, a video that Dr. Zahid has shared with us so that we can start with the discussion. Can you have a please? I'm sorry if the display is not... I don't know about it. Can we have somebody to move the boards for a while please? Dr. Hassan has specially traveled here from uh, Islamabad and so Dr. Leah from Karachi, so we are very grateful to both of them. Nothing 
big deal for a second. You got a huge opportunity right now. As you rebuild your economies and bounce back from this pandemic, this is humanity is the chance. So here's my wild idea. Don't choose extinction. Save your species before it's too late. It's time for you humans to stop making excuses and start making changes. Thank you. Thank you very much uh, for giving this opportunity and all the praise. So actually it puts uh, uh, more pressure on the speaker. So uh, actually I was thinking about it that how to approach this issue when we are talking about the nexus of sustainability, strategy and technology. Uh, so this video is actually about all of us and interestingly the advice is coming from uh, species to whom we cannot uh, you can say somehow associate in a very direct way but they have been uh, you can say faced extinction. So in order to understand that uh, why these issues are becoming important I think we need to see where are we today as a humans and what type of institutional infrastructure we do have. So when it comes to the modern, you can say, institutional infrastructure where the humans are interacting, the business organization turned out to be a very important manifestation of all of activities that we try to do in our socio-economic context. So what is a business organization? If we ask this question, and more importantly, what is, how, what does it represent in the realm of our ontology? I think we need to defend it. So, when it comes to a business organization, it is a kind of a social relationship. And we do know that all social relationships work on the mutual trust and activities. And some of the business organizations, they need the resources, tangible and intangible, but more importantly, they need the social license to operate. And their social license is being given by the, you can say, the society in which they are doing, and the kind of positive spillovers or the negative externalities which they are trying to uh, uh, create. So I think this is where uh, a, a dedicated effort has been made in recent times uh, to actually somehow reassure the confidence in the business organization which has shaken since the global financial crisis and even during the times of pandemic. Just before the pandemic in 2019, the business roundtable that represents the 181 CEOs they have redefined the purpose of a corporation and when they said that we are going to serve all the important stakeholders, we are not only there to serve the shareholder value. Probably the stakeholder capitalism seems to be a buzzword right now, but that is a theory, that is an idea that goes back to 1950s and 60s after the second world war and now again it is getting popular. So that is happening in the USA context when we come to the Europe then the World Economic Forum is actually also redefined the universal purpose of the corporation which is also being known as Diverse Manifesto. So, so this is where I think they are saying that they need to create a value for all the stakeholders which is going to be sustainable. So, so that is a kind of my opening remarks and we will take it from there and we will hear from other people and more importantly the more questions will be asked that what organizations are doing rightly and what they are doing wrongly when it comes to somehow create a nexus between sustainability, uh, uh, technology and this kind of thing.
the most important thing that we have witnessed in the global market is the advantage that the company who is actually implementing sustainable practices in their way of working, be it manufacturing, be it distribution, or be it even marketing. And how responsible marketing, manufacturing practices, entire value chain for a particular company is, and what is the product that they are providing to the consumers. So unfortunately, when it comes to the local context, so that you know our literacy rate is not that as compared to the global one. So why as a global company and the global companies, we have a responsibility to land similar sort of practices in the local context. But he said that one major tool that we can create, uh, getting a, you can say, cutting edge benefit of having this sustainable business model is a pull from the consumer itself. So I think um, local industry uh, needs to be more licensed in the pocket first to understand what are the global best practices that they can implement and definitely it will give them benefit in terms of their business increase of business growth as well. So yeah. Thank you, Rick. Um, I was recently at the Region Directors Conference where uh, Dr. Hassan was also there and we actually did talk about the same factor. Dr. Hassan was like, you to continue with that factor that literacy and the local job market and the local labor force and then how can that add value and how can we be looking forward to increasing the sustainable development initiatives? What's your take on the scenario? How does this work? Yeah, Bismillah, first of all, thank you for having me here. It's, uh, it's good to be in Lahore all the time, but this time, more interestingly, the weather is fantastic. So I'm really loving it this time. And also, the kind of audience that I see. Uh, and, and what I'm saying is, is partly uh, directed towards the faculty sitting here because uh, it's, it's their job to translate to what we are saying because we represent the industry and the government and and the other factors also, uh, like the triple helix, but more importantly to the students, you know, for, for you to understand, the world is changing fast, whether you like it or not. It's changing as fast as we blink our eyes. Uh, I have just returned from Beijing and I was amongst some of the, uh, some of the scholars, the experts, and we were thinking about how in the next th uh, 30 years, the the global environment will change and all, all the policy makers uh, are actually talking about uh, in the corporate sector they are talking about ESG which is environment, society and governance but in the government and also in the larger um, uh, industrial framework in terms of policy making like when I worked on the policy for Khabar uh, Pakhtun Khan, the industrial policy and also the five year investment strategy one of my major area of concern was to work on how to alleviate poverty. And can I be bilingual here? Yes. Uh, yeah, because sometimes you have to do these things too. Because perhaps Robert has lived more than me in Pakistan, so you understand it too better than me. No, no, no. So, uh, uh, you have to understand that whatever we talk here, uh, Perhaps Hamare Liya challenging me hoga because all policy that we make are for the next 30 years. And I assure you, next 30 years I will not be on this planet. You will be, and perhaps some of you will be sitting here and representing us and this country, and perhaps the and if we do not go into another planet, then perhaps this planet also. So in that respect, our local responsibility is more than perhaps us. And perhaps Hamne Utna with the environment, perhaps with the terms of governance and also uh, perhaps in terms of telling you what are the challenges in front of you. Uh, and what uh, HOD Sarva has just mentioned I, and I spoke about this in the Dean's conference also. When I went about eight years back to a BAU forum, this forum is about people, they think about how Asia will be in the next 30 years and then we float new ideas. So, I, I, you know, people were talking about avatar, people were talking about, uh, you know, owning a car will not be, will be a taboo, owning, even clothes will be a taboo. You will have your avatar which will tell you that you will wear a dress and that dress will come to you because of the least tightening impact that is true. And then, you know, at that time I thought, what are you talking about? And I 
I spoke to Jack Ma and that, I spoke to Ratan Tata and all of them said that this is going to happen faster than you realize. And when I came here, within perhaps one year, we had Uber, we had Kareem and you know, and also the kind of infrastructure that is. I'll just end on two things. You know, it, there's an old Chinese saying, it's about 5,000 years old Chinese saying, that if you want to become rich, build roads. And what does this building road in terms of sustainability and SDGs does is that it creates a rural urban synergy. Because when we talk about the shadow of sometimes we forget our, our rural colleagues and friends and universities and all the other areas. Aapka mulk, your economy and anything that we talk about today and perhaps yesterday will not have an impact unless we have that rural urban synergy. Unless when we talk about the poverty deviation and poverty deviation as in any way that you have to give two people a gift or a gift, we are not talking about that poverty deviation. For me, poverty deviation method is only one. Creating employment, creating job opportunity. If we create job opportunities, create and all of us sitting here and some of the ones in the front row, so you have to give a lot of challenge. Remember, in the next 10 years, there will be scarcity of water, there will be scarcity of resources, there will be scarcity of so many things, including the minerals that we are naturally endowed with. And these are all things, and because in the world, there is no boundary for knowledge, there is no boundary for investment, and there is no boundary for human resource. So in terms of poverty, I am telling you that if you have been in the world, there someone will come and replace you. And then you cannot say that we have a lot of money and the East India Company has come and these things have come. Because then people like those who are sitting here will be selfish because for me, let's for example CPEC, for me there were targets given to me. And in those targets I had to do my work whether it's in energy sector, whether it's infrastructure development, whether it's optical fiber. I had to do it within the given time. Yes, I had the social pressure that we have Pakistani employees, we have 70% Pakistani jobs created. But then also we want good human resource. And therefore the interaction here between academia, between the industry and I partly represent, I will be devil's advocate for the government also because I worked all my life ago. This discussion, this, uh, this, this debate that we will have today, आप लोगों को पीछे बैठ के शायद इतनी इंटरेस्टिंग ना लग रही हो, लेकिन मैं आपको बताऊं कि जो भी बात अभी यहाँ पे अगले आधे घंटे एक घंटे में होगी, it's about you only, it's about you because if you will not work on the corporate governance, if you will not work on the environment, if you will not work on the society, क्योंकि my model of all what we talk is starts from society and culture, then comes the government and then comes the corporate sector. And when you talk about society and culture, ki baat karte, the, the role of the academia, the role of the higher education institution, and more importantly, you all's role is very critical. Thank you, sir. Um, I'm glad to discussion was being so automatically uh, in the right way. I would like to move on to you and take in the point from Boxer about rural urban connect that's somewhat extensively your area of experience. Thank you. Uh, we are basically talking about the, uh, this business for technology and uh, this strategy and uh, sustainability. I want to show a different picture. Most of the people they are not aware of this. So, the currently in Pakistan, uh, there are more than 25 million people in school. Uh, so, in this era of technology and era of this uh, uh, businesses, most of we are talking about, the future of the school at this age, five to six teens. So 25 million is a number actually. And uh, unfortunately with this recent drought and uh, previous COVID, that also uh, added more number in this. So there are no official statistics and figures, 
but it's my uh, uh, like belief of 5 to 30 million children in this era which we are living in. And another interesting uh, indicator which I want to give is uh, there are certainly 1 million population in this country who would have cannot read and write a single paragraph. We are talking about the, uh, all those uh, like the awareness and how we got to sensitize, we need a human source to can work. So just imagine with this much primitive population and this huge number of all of children, where it leads to hospital harm development. And the disparity which uh, we have been talking about the rural urban disparity and then uh, the new genders. So this 78% of children who are not in the school they belong to rural regions. And most of them are girls who are not in the school. So what's happening with the children that are in school today are the people are in the field. Frankly speaking, we cannot achieve any development goal. Because the education is the foundational goal and with those this education, uh, which is uh, and the sustainable development goal, which our target is goal four. So, if we are not achieving goal four, uh, I'm sure we cannot achieve any single goal. We cannot achieve this goal of make either zero or a poverty or a sustainability or environment or whatsoever. So, the foundations, unless we have achieved that foundational goal, we cannot achieve any other goals and we cannot get human souls from our industry and we cannot get the people who have run this country. Uh, so there is a, a somehow estimate if any country they cross the 70% of literacy rate, then they begin this development like uh, the process start. Just take the example of Bangladesh. I went to uh, Bangladesh a few years back when the literacy rate was almost safe to Pakistan and then they start basically investing on literacy education and they are now more than 76 or 77 percent literacy rate now and we do see the change come. and we can specifically we can see the change now it's specifically reflect in the uh, uh, health indicator or uh, economic growth and all these indicators so literacy and basic education if foundational goal may not achieve we cannot achieve any other goal but unfortunately uh, there is no realization at the any level which I have observed in a few years, the allocation to education is a uh, minimum requirement. Country like Pakistan is 4% of our GDP. So, what is current allocation to this sector? In last economic survey, Pakistan says 1.8% only. So, this allocation, which I think is the lowest in the world, with this we cannot basically. Uh, see this uh, uh, like a beautiful dream which we have, uh, we are talking about how we can compete this uh, uh, like business for and also this industrial revolution and technology and sustainability. So without investing on this, uh, we can achieve and uh, the other problem with this, our literacy growth uh, is very low I guess to adjust. Calculating the literacy rate in 2005, uh, 2006 and 7, at that time we were around 50 million people in the rate, and now 71 million. So what does it mean? So the end year we are getting more in the rate in the society because the population growth is more than the literacy growth, and this basically make us every year more like deprived from all these global Thank you, uh, Dr. Biro. We would like to take uh, the discussion further and be the growth specialist. I would like you to tell us about uh, what are the, how can the business schools take collective action to promote the initiatives towards uh, sustainability in the uh, How can the business schools take collective action to promote the initiatives towards sustainability in the world? So, everything here. These gentlemen are, are incredibly uh, knowledgeable. If we don't start at the university, in the college, even the school level, right now, in my school, we talk about sustainability. And we say, okay, what are you doing in your class? What are you doing in your classroom to do it? 
and I can show up. Oh, look at this, I have this, I've done this. Is that embedded? Is that part of what we believe? One third of your country was under war this year. We have to be looking at this now, and it's both faculty and students, and, and, and the administration needs to be taking this seriously. It's beginning, we're at the beginning. Well, it's ridiculous that we're at the beginning because it's been no more decades that there's a problem. I also am at I didn't believe it at first. I mean, I, you know, it's a little, little extra rain, a little this. In every classroom, imagine if when we were talking about uh, the, 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 uh, the possibility of recycling and, and, and the green uh, 4.0, it was a core part of your finance or your marketing or whatever course, and not just a side course. Oh, I can take a course in environmental sustainability and I can learn this and I can learn that. Now, in my opinion, and that's all it is, is Pakistan has to start small in the sense of it has to do it everywhere. It has to do it in all the schools. It can't be something that we try to impose from on top, but rather you, the students and the faculty, need to be saying, this is real, this is now, and we need to start talking about all the different ways that we can make green, make Pakistan green, because we're not going to do it. Pakistan is primarily small and medium enterprises. There are huge uh, organizations, uh, obviously companies, and they are part. I have, I, in, at my school, we have a circular polymer institute. It's doing small things. It's doing round tables. It's doing, it's, it's gathering, it's working with other schools. This is the kind of thing that needs to happen at a much greater level in order for Pakistan to overcome the scarcities that we already are experiencing. But this is what, again, my opinion, we need to be doing this like this pal, but it's going to be, it needs to spread and spread and spread because otherwise we're going to be in trouble in the not so far distant future. Thank you, Dr. Thank you. 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 I might have sounded like a doomsday merchant in my earlier uh, short intro. Let me also tell you, and, and like any project management or management specialist would do, that you look at you a sort analysis. You look at your strengths, you look at your weaknesses, you look at the opportunities, and you look at the threats. Or based on that, then you develop your strategy, you develop your policy. For me, any policy that I make, and I was fortunate to make several in the last 10 years. The policy that I make, I keep three P's in my mind. First is people, second is the planet, and third is the prosperity. You know, if you cannot create prosperity and an economic activity through any policy articulation or through any linkages that you're talking about here and perhaps everywhere, that policy, other wo policy, aap logon ke liye jobs create nahi karte. Aap logon ke liye right enabling environment create nahi karte. Main jin investors pe kaam karta hoon, unke liye for them to come and invest in Pakistan, if, if any of my policy does not create the enabling environment, then that policy is worth the dustbin 
science that we are talking about. You know, sustainability, and again, you know, as I said earlier, for me, everything starts from society and culture, and then the government, and then the private sector. When we talk of the scarcity of resources that I just mentioned, and also uh, Robert mentioned, it starts from your home. And we have mothers and fathers and teachers sitting here also, and all of you are responsible students, I believe. I have worked with Chinese for almost 15 years now and with every other South Asian country in terms of projects management. You know, conserving smaller things are important, whether it's your money, whether it's water that you waste in your morning shower, whether the energy that we are using now, and I was so happy to see the video in the morning when I saw this, uh, you know, the whole solar system on your rooftops. It speaks about your leadership and it speaks about how your university is serious about the sustainability of environment. Anything, any trash, any litter that you put outside is a challenge to our sustainability. One third, as, as was mentioned earlier, hum pe ke, and I'll speak in this and only. यहाँ पे बैठ के बात करना बहुत आसान है कि पानी के नीचे हैं लोग थोड़ा सा पैसा जमा करा दें पुराने कुछ कपड़े उठा के ले जाएं The challenge is much more, ladies and gentlemen, and the big countries are actually realizing this. Now they are linking environment with security because if there is environment degradation, say for instance the floods that we had and if that has an impact on the overall poverty number because our poverty number has grown in the last one year. And, and of course, COVID had its own impact on us. So with that poverty growing, it creates a challenge on the security. And I will tell you that the countries, and if you realize this, it is up to you. Because other countries realize that if there is a security challenge in any country like Pakistan, it has, as there are no boundaries now, then that security challenge goes to other countries also. And therefore, the countries are willing to work with us and willing to work with each one of us and also the organizations that we have just spoken of and some of us represent. Aap logon ke liye isme kya hai? I am talking to the students. Aap logon ke liye huge opportunity hai because every environment and corporate sector, as I said, we speak about ESG, we speak about sustainability now. Even the state bank has been directed now to forward loans to corporates and also to the uh, to other enterprises based on their ESG performances. So therefore, they have to be serious about environment, society, and governance. So therefore, it is a huge opportunity for you. Either today, your faculty, and if you set up a sustainability, or, uh, uh, like they have said, a small. Uh, set up in your uh, organization and each of you are you the HOD. If you, if you start talking about sustainability in any lecture that we give, especially in the management sciences and perhaps in IER also, aap ke liye jobs ki paul opportunity. Remember, and I, I don't know whether I actually say this because students take it in a different way. Main, jab, when you work in a cross-cultural environment, to aapka dhamaag dusri tera chalta. आप लोगों के दरमियान हम लोगों के दरमियान नकम्मे लोग ज्यादा हैं लेकिन ये उन लोगों के लिए ऑपरचुनिटी है जो मेहनत करना चाहते हैं जो अपने लिए नीच क्रिएट करना चाहते हैं जो हार्ड वर्क करके अचीव करना चाहते हैं सो इफ यू क्रिएट योर नीच अराउंड सस्टेनेबिलिटी आई एम टेलिंग यू एंटरप्राइजेज सिटिंग हेयर एंड नॉट सिटिंग हेयर विल रन आफ्टर यू टू गिव यू जॉब्स on the pay scale that you want. Aap interview betting and you'll tell them that this is my, this is my say vision for sustainability and environment upgradation and you know poverty alleviation. And this, these are the courses that I've done in my university and also privately through the technology that we are talking about because technology has made it very simple. But I'll just take one more minute because uh, these are, so agar aap, अपनी आज से तैयारी शुरू कर लेंगे एंड फॉर दोज हुई बैचलर्स एंड मास्टर्स ट्रस्ट मी यू नो यू कैन गेट एनी जॉब दैट यू वांट
you will be a celebrity in that interview. But for the policy making, makers like us and all those who are sitting here, for the faculty here, please, जो भी आप बात करें वो ग्राउंड रियलिटीज पे बात करें जो भी आप बात करें यस व्हेन वी टॉक ऑफ टेक्नोलॉजी वी टॉक ऑफ एआई वी टॉक ऑफ रोबोटिक्स वी टॉक ऑफ ब्लॉकचेन एंड वी टॉक ऑफ अदर थिंग्स एंड समटाइम्स चैट जीपीटी जिसकी बात हो रही मैं आपको गारंटी देता हूं फॉर द फैकल्टी हेयर बिकॉज दिस डिस्कशन विल हैपन अगेन लेटर परहैप्स ये टेक्नोलॉजी आपके लिए चैलेंज नहीं करता मैं आपको बताऊं जब भी इंडस्ट्रियल रेवोल्यूशन आता है चाहे फर्स्ट हो इन स्टडी इंडस्ट्रियल रेवोल्यूशन लोगों को एक कंसर्न आ जाता है कि पता नहीं क्या होने लगा है क्या रिस्क आने लगा है इट डज नॉट अगर आप स्मार्ट हैं जिसने टेक्नोलॉजी बनाई है टेक्नोलॉजी उसको बीट ही नहीं कर सकती सो इफ यू आर स्मार्ट एंड इफ यू प्रिपेयर वेल टूडे एंड एज एड पीपल सिटिंग ऑन द फ्रंट रो they have their job sustained sustainability insured and assured aap logon ke liye challenge so you have to work on the new technologies kyunki hamari jo generation of bb boomers hai we are not we are we look at technology as risk you look at technology as way of life because in our study of maslow we we studied you know um, As, as some of our politicians would say, and I'll put it in Urdu because politics are more well known in us. Roti, kapda, or makan. But now it is roti, kapda, makan, or internet. So therefore, you have to look at the new technologies. You look at the new because some of us will say, "No, no, no." These are your parents. They will say, "No, no, no." These are your parents. They will say, "No, no, no." यूज इट इन योर एडवांटेज क्योंकि अगले तीन साल में विच विल फिनिश पर हैव्स अर्लियर देन यू लाइक यू विल बी सिटिंग हेयर एंड गिविंग द सेम लेक्चर टू द नेक्स्ट जनरेशन ओनली दोज वर्क आउट टुवर्ड्स द टेक्नोलॉजी टुवर्ड्स सस्टेनेबिलिटी एंड टुवर्ड्स मेकिंग अ स्ट्रेटजी फॉर योर सेल्फ थैंक यू हमें No, but after these floods, we listened about imported cars, imported, uh, you can say, phones, and all those things. But being an agricultural economy, we are having uh, to import the onions. So that is a tragedy. Okay, and when we talk about literacy challenges and all those things, and probably we are having a fight at multiple battles, multiple, multiple battles. We are fighting at multiple fronts. But unfortunately, what is there in it for us? We do talk about CPAC. We do talk about all those things. Yes, we build the infrastructure, but what about the special economic zones? Why we have not been able to work on that? Because that's where all the technology, infrastructure, and the living environment we are going to have. Uh, I used to teach at University of Australia back in 2010, 2009, and I used to make fun of Proton cars. Oh, this is not a good car because the Malaysian economy, the government, they have to subsidize that car and they have to pay uh, the money. It's, it's not, it's not going to compete with the international market. But the same car is making fun of me when I see on the Pakistani roads. Okay, so this is where we need to actually try to understand that how we are going to provide that kind of enabling environment. And yes, everything has to start from the classroom. So, for example, we need to change our curriculum. We need to change our priorities. That way, we are going to provide much more hands-on experience to our students. For example, I am teaching a, a management simulation for the next year, in which the students have been assigned a role as a manager of a four-star hotel, which is located in New York, London, Singapore, or you can customize it. As per the Lahore and Karachi environment, and then you have to reduce your carbon footprint up to seventy percent or sixty percent. And all that data is is you can you can set it and you can let the people and the students to realize and understand that what they can do and what they can't do. 
if you go, if, if, I have the same experience, I go to the my students and I talk about sustainability and all those things. Is there who cares? But I think the kind of uh, uh, response we are getting from the mother nature uh, in, 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 in the wake of these recent floods, and then there is a you can say history towards it. The one forte of our economy and of country that is agriculture, probably that also going to be compromised. And we shouldn't forget that we didn't make much desired investment in terms of the technology and industrial growth way we should be making as part of the CPAC or any other you can say initiative that we need to take. So, so this is where these are the alarming situations. So, but, but again, that is, the, that is, I don't want to discourage you that is the negative side of it, but the positive side of it, there are many possibilities. The IR 4.0, the technology, the enabling environment in the context of the classroom discussion, and going out of the classroom discussion, I think we, we can do a lot, a lot more. I don't want to repeat whatever has been said, but I think there's a lot of opportunity, and if we are going to embed these things into our curriculum, then we will be training our students, we will be giving them hands-on experience that how to deal with these challenges. And then they will take it and they will make it part of their civic sense. This is again very, very important when it comes to our local context or the, or, or the social fabric of which we are operating. Thank you. Thank you, Dr. So we talked about the AKO environment and we all know that the output which is produced by the academic institution becomes the input in the corporate sector. So I would like you to share light on what kind of human resource do you have in present and what do you think we as the academicians can do to make the human resource better or to do all the better for the corporate sector? So I'd like just one minute to reflect uh, on what has been discussed earlier with regards to the sustainability mindset that we want to inculcate um, in our institute and in our society in general. So I think, uh, you know, schools, universities, they have a big responsibility to inculcate the mindset. Uh, in, in our society, uh, in our even homes, we don't consider water as a resource. We don't consider electricity as a resource. Rest are we putting aside, but these are two major challenges. Yeah? And if you see the current economic situation, these two things, the first is electricity. While our major electricity production is from a furnace oil which we import. So see the dilemma that one resource that is actually leading our um, economy just by virtue that we, we don't have a sustainable uh, options available to produce electricity on a massive scale. That's the first problem. And on the other hand, we are actually misusing that. So that's that's the first thing. Second is related to what we just spoke about. And honestly, if you go and Google, um, everybody have their smartphone, they can even Google it. So Pakistan is among the list of the countries who are actually on the verge of scarcity of water. Yeah. So imagine that these are the two major resources that we are actually consuming like anything. Uh, and definitely when it comes to kidney and the responsibility. So the first thing that we immediately need to do is that we need to put these areas as part of, of our curriculum. Yeah. Second is with regards to the academia and industrial equipment who have internships again. But we need to solve a real life problem that are in hand. And if we go out and find tens of things, we talk about cellular economy. Yeah. Organizations, the private global organizations, they are running this agenda to create a circular economy, particularly on plastics. Yeah. Uh, because the problem is that we don't have an infrastructure available even for a plastic waste collection. So the company has to actually recollect the waste and then start recycling. So that's on the infra bit, and I agree with Dr. Sabat is saying that if you are able to track this kind of solutions, which I'm sure you guys are equally equipped to come up with. And now the, the, the world is a global village. So we can easily pick best practices rather than creating or inventing a new lead all together. Yeah? And we can just replicate it here in Pakistan. It can actually bring quite a lot of improvement. Agriculture, I could agree. Our major GDP is linked with agriculture and see our per acre output. You know, the people you have, we used to have a very general routine, it's, it's a very common symbol for us, yeah? We used to import wheat, imagine. We used to import pulses from Canada, imagine the logistics 
uh, of importing wheat or pulses from Canada or all the way to Pakistan because our output, per acre output is very low. And same is the case now with the manpower. If you compare the skill set that we have in our country, because we as a global company, we benchmark ourselves with the other global companies. Yeah? So if we benchmark our people or our staff or manpower output with any of other country, we find a very difficult space to be in, honestly speaking. And the only saviour today is we have is that our economy is so weak. Our dollar to PKI ratio is too high, so it's not advisable to import any modern technology to fight. But believe you me, once we are through with this, technology will replace everyone. Because ultimately companies are here to do the business. And if they don't want, if they don't have the profitable business and importing any good here and market here is more profitable then nobody is going to invest money in industrialization which is key to any country's progress we talk about Bangladesh, we talk about India similar sort of uh, countries that we have by cultural, by skin, but they have actually turned up and I think that's where at least universities, private universities can actually put their, their, their foot to, to create that difference now comes to the last part, which is was the real question, which is related to the industrial academy and how can we leverage that. Honestly speaking, for us, it's more of a practical people that we want to actually provide us the real life solution rather having a bookish knowledge, which is definitely in somewhat is required. But what the industry needs is also very important to understand. This is with regards to the skill set, this is with regards to the ways of learning it. So I think uh, the, the key uh, message that of, I would want to land here is that let's let's connect more to the industry in different ways. One, I think, good initiative that we have, but frequent and make industry be part of the curriculum making of all the institute uh, that are we, we currently running in our country. That can actually create a big difference. Thank you, I will be taking last two questions and then we will open the house for a Q&A session. Uh, Dr. Mira, I would like to share it from your side now. Uh, when you talk about these students should be equipped with proficiency to solve uh, or come up with new answers. We should take questions from the audience. Uh, right, sir. I, I guess we would like to continue. We are running short of time and uh, okay. the boys and girls ask us. We uh, can open the house for discussion with any question and answer with respective uh, panelists who would like to take a look. First of all, I'm the, I'm the last person you should ask this question from and I'll tell you why. I'm not the person who would promote that we should become Asian Tiger. Banna I will be the last person to promote that we should become 7% GDP. Because I am a person who is in, in his brain works incrementally. I work on working on step by step. I don't work on jumping and crossing the river on one lap, I would rather work on one stage first, 
grow at 3 percent, then grow at 5 percent. And some of the economists sitting here might not agree. I do not want to be Asian tiger. I just want to be what I am. Okay. So in terms of that, the sustainability aspect is more. Okay, now I'll, I'll answer this question with two respect. A, as someone who's worked with projects perhaps more than anyone who's sitting here and also then as now I, am, I work in a university as a professor also. We are not very shocked at tall claims. We are not very shocked at two things. MOU signing. Oh, we, are, we love this. You, you go to your university and check how many MOU. I have been a diplomat for over 10 years. I know, you know our, our embassy is a graveyard of MOUs. And so are our universities. You can see how many MOUs are you see how many MOUs are signed. What is the shock of the MOUs signed? What is the shock of the MOUs signed? We don't have any shock. Because that needs effort. And there is no time. There is no job. 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 There is no sustainability issues. Bhi. So therefore, we should not make these tall claims by any means that we are number one hai ya number two. The, the mayor for a university, whether it's number one or number two or number hundred, will, the, will be the intake that they will get. So if you are getting good intake of students, people are willing to pay more to be in your institution, then this is your mayor whether you are doing the right kind of work. Second, with respect to the research, this is the university mayor, so I do not know who is the first day, who is the first you know. I just want, for me, where people are willing to pay more is a good university, isn't it? Which has an international linkage. The second aspect is about the research. You know, you just can't have applied research only and you can't just have pure research. It has to be a combination of both. I am not good in pure research. But that does not mean pure research is not good. There are areas where people do research. I do research because I work. I am a practitioner, isn't it? So as, as, a, as a researcher, uh, my, some or the other, I, I drag my students towards, towards SEZ because I, I am an expert on SEZ development. So some or the other, it comes. This is a interesting CPEC. So when we went to CPEC, on the industrial cooperation on the SEZ ki baat. <clears throat> and, and, and perhaps that would reflect on your question and I'll end on that because I am positive on the opportunities that are available through technology, through strategy and through and also through great population. I am talking about it, but you know, when I interact, when I ask Jack Ma whether uh, you know, you should come to Pakistan and invest. And he said, are you ready? But then he said that there is a huge population in Pakistan which speaks very good English and that's your biggest strength. Because especially in technology and especially in virtual work, you, uh, language matters, isn't it? And therefore I urge on all universities that you better your communication skills. And it's not necessary that you better your English. If you say Urdu, you can do Urdu too. If you do Urdu, you can do it in your own way. So therefore, language skills in terms of communication, interpersonal skills are very, very important. But now coming to the aspect of, uh, lastly, on the aspect of uh, what we are. When we went to CPEC, first of all, in 2016, because when I came back from China, they employed me as the project director. So we were understanding how Chinese work, because there is a huge difference between our culture. You know, their productivity or आपकी प्रोडक्टिविटी में जमीन आसमान का फर्क और अब अगर रमजान आएगा तो अपनी प्रोडक्टिविटी खुद देख लीजिए सो इन दैट एस्पेक्ट वी वेंट एंड वी सेड नो वी नीड 37 एससीजीज इन स्पेशल इन सीपा और हैव अ हार्ट प्लीज आप एक कर लें मेक इट एट सेंटर ऑफ एक्सीलेंस एंड फ्रॉम देयर ग्रो हैव एन इनस्पोर्ट डेवलपमेंट ग्रो इंक्रीमेंटली from wherever you want to start perhaps start from punjab and then ek mushroom karega usse aap industry yeah, no, 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 we are a political economy. We need one special economic zone every province. Isn't it? Let baat hote hote hote, eventually nine parang. And then the, 
the decision for the sites were also based on political economy and I am not objecting political or anything that creates jobs for these youngsters and that creates opportunities for us is, 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 is okay economy. But today you have to see that you have one or two SCGs and the Chinese were right at that time. Russia is also because we have a big knowledge of Russia. I have been in the past four years because I, I can speak Chinese, I went with them, you know, worked with them. Allayed there some of the concern despite the security concern that we have. Lastly, I will tell you this one here too. Sometimes we link our growth in not so growth to security. Se bhi link karte you know, please remember investment, research, work, universities, work in war zones also. It is not that something is going to be tough for you. So I, don't, I, I do not know that we are first or second or top or below. If we are good, our leadership is pragmatic. If we are getting a job internationally, mil rahi hai, Lastly, I have a big thing against you, and please don't judge me because of what I am saying. This is what we have as merchants, right? Brain drain. When you work on technology, then the philosophy of brain drain is also wrong. Because you will go outside and take the CEO's jobs, like the Indians are taking, like the Malaysians are taking, or the Indonesians are taking, so they will bring A, honor to this country, and B, they will bring remittance to this country. So, and then they will come back and serve this country once again. Somewhere and some of us have actually. So, कुछ हमारी है ये जो ingrained philosophies हैं ना to be number one, to be Asian tiger. इसको जरा side पे रखें. Qualitative और quantitative work करें. HEC को भी इस सिलसिले में देखना है कि उसने क्या करना है. HEC looks at number and perhaps research both champion. Look at the quality of research and then look at these youngsters क्या ये इस तरह के बन रहे हैं per university. एक और चीज मैंने अच्छी सी कॉन्फ्रेंस में कहा शी वाज देयर आल्सो एन एल्सी दिस एक तो हमारे पॉलिटिशियंस को भी आजकल एक नया शौक हो गया कि जहाँ जाएं वहाँ पे यूनिवर्सिटी अनाउंस करें और एक जहाँ जाएं जलसा करने के लिए तो वहाँ पे जाकर एक इंडस्ट्रियल जोन अनाउंस करें ये आजकल एक नया ट्रेंड है जाएं बस यू नो जस्ट मेक दी स्टॉल क्लेम यू वांट टू सेट अप अ यूनिवर्सिटी और अब उससे ज़्यादा आजकल विमेन यूनिवर्सिटी का बहुत शौक चला वेदर यू हैव दैट आपने डेमोग्राफिकली तो देखने वेदर यू हैव दी काइंड ऑफ इनपुट टू रन अ बिकॉज़ यूनिवर्सिटी एचसी विल नॉट गिव मनी फॉर it, for me, it does not matter how fast and how top you are moving as long as you are moving in the right direction. Sir, do you have any other questions from the house? Hello. Uh, so, this is Mr. Farooq. I heard of you. Hello. Hello. So, uh, I am Mr. Farooq. I am Mr. Farooq. I am the agriculture specialist. Uh, working with packages group right now. Um, I heard a few words of agriculture uh, during the panel discussion, so I thought uh, they made a few words that I can also add, uh, add some value to the discussion. So, uh, the top first, I think technology. I think technology is a current business that operations well established. And you know the exact steps that you right from the start till the end. But unfortunately, I think agriculture in on the farm level, a uh, farmer doesn't know actually steps and other steps in the operational efficiency. So we need to know exactly the agriculture in the farmers and our different stakeholders involved in the demographic. And based on that demography, whose demography to look at, what are the operations involved? And then I think then there is the need of technology to bring in the efficiency. Uh, unfortunately, a boy is coming that many agri agritech companies market in the market have come. And I have worked with a few agri tech companies, who are satellite based or AI based uh, models. Ke upar kaam kar rahe. But again, they have a agri-based economy, hai, uh, 
हमने उसको एनहेंस भी करना है और उसको ऊपर भी लेके जाना है बट उसके लिए जरूरी है कि ग्रास रूट लेवल के ऊपर जो फार्मर है उसकी नीड्स को समझा जाए क्या वो टेक्नोलॉजी अभी उसकी जरूरत है और अगर उसकी जरूरत है तो वो किस तरह की टेक्नोलॉजी उसको चाहिए क्या सेटेलाइट बेस्ड टेक्नोलॉजी ए आई बेस्ड टेक्नोलॉजी फार्मर की जरूरत है या नहीं बिकॉज फार्मर को बैठा हुआ एयरपोर्ट टामे वाली में या कसूर में या ऐसी जगह पे जहाँ पे शायद थ्री जी भी नहीं आ रहा सो दीज आर दिंग्स जिसके ऊपर काम करने की जरूरत है और हमारे जो बिजनेस ग्रेजुएट्स हैं खासतौर पर आई एम नॉट बिजनेस ग्रेजुएट्स आई एम बी आर फॉर एग्रीकल्चर स्पेशलिस्ट तो बिजनेस ग्रेजुएट्स जब की पोजिशन पे आते हैं जहाँ पे उनको एक आई थिंक एग्रीकल्चर वैल्यू चेन को टैकल करना पड़ता है वहाँ पे देखते थ्री का चैलेंज कि उनको ऑन ग्राउंड जो डेमोग्राफिक कंडीशन है और जो फार्मर के रियल टाइम प्रॉब्लम्स हैं या जो वैल्यू चेन के अंदर कंस्टेंट्स हैं उनका पता नहीं होता सो मेरे पैनलिस्ट के ये क्वेश्चन है कि हाउ टू डील विद दिस चैलेंज इस तरीके से आप अपने जो बिजनेस ग्रेजुएट्स हैं उनके करिकुलम में या उनकी जो स्किल्स है ये चीज बिल्डिंग कर सकते जब आपकी हाफ ऑफ द पॉपुलेशन स्टॉप वर्किंग इन एग्रीकल्चर जो टेक्नोलॉजी बेसिक आज वो यूज कर रहा है आर फार्मर दैट इज अ सोलर पैनल एंड दे आर रनिंग द ट्यूबवेल्स बेस्ड अपॉन दैट एंड रेस्ट इज द रेस्ट इज अ मैन पावर आप जो आप द इशू यू आर फेस विद द बिजनेस ग्रेजुएट्स दैट इज द एग्जैक्ट चैलेंज द प्रॉब्लम विद बिजनेस करिकुलम इज लाइक दैट वी बोरो ऑल द बेस्ट इन थिंग्स एंड देन वी थिंक ओके फाइन दैट बेस्ट इन थिंग्स इज गोइंग टू वर्क इन ऑल आवर कॉन्टेक्ट्स people do appreciate the more dynamic research in the business context but um, i think i am i am going to be one of the rebellions when it comes to the pure academic research i think the time has come where the business schools need to focus more on applied research and let me tell you uh, where where all that uh, you can say pure academic research is going whatever we are publishing in journals that is actually facilitating our business school grants that is a direct link If you publish in FT fifty, for instance, times fifty journals, what will happen? Your ranking will go up. But will it really contribute to the economy or to the stakeholder, the society, where you are operating as a business school? No. Probably the same effort can be made to design certain internship projects, which is going to solve the real life problems. Okay. So we, as a, as a, I think, as a business schools, we need to pay much more attention to what we are doing with our given resources. And it's not a local phenomenon. If we do talk about ACSP, eight hundred business schools, they are spending four billion dollar per annum basis on research related activities, and forty percent of the faculty time is dedicated towards that. And how many patent, how many new, we can say, uh, ways of doing business is there introducing now? And the problems happen, unfortunately, when we come to it. That the, 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 the big organization, they have the MTO program, and somehow we do know that there are certain. constraints to that those particular new programs and unfortunately uh, the graduates are not trained in that way and then they do not have the touch with the uh, 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 with the young ultimately it needs to go back uh, to the you can say to the basic fundamental level and this is where the curriculum along with the industry input to be designed in a manner that way we can we can do certain program with the focus of when we put key You can say needs areas which are well identified, and that need to be somehow ingrained into our business curriculum. Uh, if, if you say, "Is he gay? If you are wrong or gay, as a me, I am a business school. But here, I will defend him." No, that is a reality. That is a state of affairs. And 90% of our pure data research is based upon uh, uh, primary data, the survey questionnaires. Just ask the students. Is Sarah the Sarah survey question? Who back to fill it? And then they come up with these theses. If I ask them to do a work on a scanning data, they put their hands up. Thank you. I just have a, a small comment on on what you have said. Ek to aap khud, I, I'm not an uh, agriculture specialist. I am management specialist. But uh, 
sometimes in our understanding and some, sometimes in our discussion, especially the discussion that we do in English, we forget to one जिस तरह हम रूरल इकोनॉमी को अंडरमाइन करते हैं और इसकी समटाइम हम रूरल इंटेलिजेंस को भी अंडरमाइन करते हैं हम समझते हैं कि गांव और देहात में बैठा हुआ आदमी ना बिल्कुल बेवकूफ है ऐसा नहीं अगर आप आज स्टडी करें ना ना आज क्यों बिकॉज़ यू नो आई वर्क विद पैकेजेस आई वर्क विद सेफायर आई वर्क विद फॉर कोऑपरेटिव फार्मिंग की एंड यू नो यू ब्रिंग इन जार हर साल एक तो नया जारगन आ जाता है सोलर ट्यूब वेल्स सोलर टेक्नोलॉजी को सबसे पहले गांव ने इम्प्रेस किया शहरों में तो अभी आना शुरू हुआ है जब बिजली के बिल महंगे हों आपकी रिक्वायरमेंट जो है वो पर कैपिटा या पर यूनिट यील्ड की है वेदर यू डू इट विद जी आई जेड वेदर यू डू इट विद एनी थिंग यू नो चाइनीज के साथ जब हम मोनोग्राफिक स्टडी कर रहे थे एंड देन वी वर वर्किंग ऑन दैम तो इसके अंदर जो सोशो इकोनॉमिक का ज्वाइंट वर्किंग ग्रुप है उसके अंदर एंड दे ऑल्सो एम्फोसाइज के कोई हमारे साथ प्राइवेट सेक्टर कॉपरेट एंटिटी जॉइंट वेंचर कर ले लाइक फातमा लाइक आपका पैकेज फॉर सेटिंग अप डेमोस्ट्रेशन जोन्स लाइक एस सी जी हम हम एस सी जी इंडस्ट्रियलाइजेशन की बात करते हैं मैं तो बहुत कोशिश अरसे से कर रहा हूँ पिछले आठ साल से कि एक कोई एग्रीकल्चर सेक्टर लेड एस सी जी सेटअप हो जाए और उसके लिए सारे ग्रुप में से कोई भी एक आज so no don't we should not blame intelligence and you know rural uh, uh, honesty on what they want to do paisa kisi ko bura nahi lagta kyunki usse asoodgi aati hai usse tarakki aati hai usse taakat bhi aati hai and most of our uh, you know agriculture specialists are sitting in the parliament doing legislation so so i think it it's not that difficult लो हैंगिंग को भूल जाए जो जमीन पे गिरा हुआ फ्रूट है उसको उठा के खा ले इससे पहले कि वो सड़ जाए कल्चर की बात कर रहे थे रिगार्डिंग So if I if we even talk about industry 4.0, it is not going to happen in the next six months. So there are the steps that need to follow. So I think particularly respective curriculum or maybe the design for for aspiring of that particular area. For example, if you have a certain population, research is to come up with a business plan, and this is the plan that we want to take forward to in let's say two years, three years. That would help. So. डोंट यू थिंक है अगर मैं एक साल में सब चेंज नहीं कर सकता तो सब सिस्टम बिगाड़ ही देनी अपने के लिए दिस वुड बी अ बेटर दिस सो आई थिंक रियल जर्नी जो है दैट इज स्टेप सो दैट्स अ पॉइंट जस्ट फॉर द रीजन इफ यू फाइनेंस अगेन दैट आर ऑन द बेसिस सो वी आर इन द रेट एंड आई जस्ट वेयर आई विल क्रॉस द रोड टू सी सम माय इंडिकेशन एंड सम एडवर्टाइज बीइंग टू गार्डन Uh, some direction goes for us. So they are not even able to read those simple instructions to change their uh, like uh, practices in the agriculture. So this is one of the challenge, uh, and uh, we are trying to introduce uh, some maybe uh, uh, digital type of uh, some instructions to them, and they cannot even use the uh, simple form. And how we can expect them to uh, uh, introduce this our uh, technology also? Second. Why we are basically uh, teaching this secondaries to just metric and send them to the like next level and then to university level? We need more metric and educated partner. All of the secondary schools, for example, secondary schools, educated for our culture, for our education, they should teach how to grow this rice in a proper way and to improve the productivity of rice, how to add the value to. Why they are not teaching mango farming? In the Bhutan and Uttar Pradesh, and when the buyer are in Uttar Pradesh, they do the how to do the day farming. So the education should be more relevant to their local economy and local culture and social background. It should not be just producing a graduate without any skills and practice. They are adding more burden to the other economy. So the definitely we are the agriculture society and agriculture is a huge potential if we start connecting uh, producing. Thank you, Dr. Uh, Shuzi, I have a question. Here we are talking 
about sustainable business environment and it is not possible without environment. But if you are uh, checking the facts and figures, Pakistan is just contributing 0.8% in carbon footprint and less than 1% in global warming and we are the most effective at that rate for a little country in the global market. So we have to spend a lot of money in that sense. Country which is capital, already capital uh, deficient. I think it's not a social or global injustice that, that a country which is not contributing uh, a lot in global warming and it is demand for the world from the people, from all, all of us, that we have to spend a lot of our budget in sustainable, in developing the sustainable environment and environment friendly ones. So what should we do? A capital deficient country, many challenges other than the environment, where should we start? We have studied a big uh, good area in economics in which we discuss that if we have a deficient country, we have to allocate our resources in well sector. First, we start up with this. If we bring a change in that, then overlap the effects of this sector, bring the development in another one. So, we have we as a persons of academia and people, we should sit and discuss and find out the sector on which we are going to invest. Because if we are delegated our resources in many sectors, we get nothing. So what do you think that how and when, on which forum we can uh, get the attention of the world that it's not our fault. You should all have to contribute in our environment protection policies. Number one, that's my question. And number two, what you want people to say is that from which point we have to start. If we uh, diversify our resources in many sectors, we get nothing as I this. So, which sector is the most important one? And what do you want? Which sector is the important one? And how can we meet these environmental challenges in which we are contributing nothing in terms of global environment. To me, take it from what? Dr. Gandhi. You're not going to get everything done all at once. That's why I started by saying you need to start small all over, everywhere. The other thing is, you now have to be uh, teaching not for today. My colleague earlier gave an example of a case study about a four or five star hotel that if in my, not my MBA, it would have been how do you increase revenue, how do you solve this problem? No, he said, how do you reduce the carbon footprint? We, start, we started thinking differently, but we have to grow that. And that, that has to happen in every in, in every area. Faculty, we can't teach for today. We are no longer just a, a, a straight line. We are circular. We are trying to look. And in order for that to happen, it has to happen in every, every academic area. And you're right. It's, it's frustrating. We're, we would love them. But look, look at the economy right now. We're not going to suddenly put a lot of money into sustainability. But we have a conference like this. We have places going on, and people, like the footprint uh, example, are thinking differently. And that is where we go. And faculty, you need to be teaching your, your students for four or five years from now, not for just today. No, it's this was the cell phone that I had in 1990. It was this big. Okay, this is the cell phone. Now, pretty soon, we're not going to need a cell phone. We're going to do it by our heads. You have to start teaching for the future so that they can adapt. But your, your, your frustrations are recognized and agreed with. I just, I just want to say another thing. So, please, I don't want to argue with what you said, but I will just say what I, I understand and what my philosophy is. I do not believe in global peace and I do not believe in global justice. 
बिकॉज इफ यू बिलीव इन ग्लोबल पीस एंड ग्लोबल जस्टिस तो फिर आप एक लंबे लॉन्ग रोड हेड पे निकल जाते हैं बिकॉज यू हैव टू वर्क ऑन सस्टेनेबिलिटी येस्टरडे नॉट इवन टूमोरो टू वर्क ऑन इट येस्टरडे सो यू लुक एट अदर नेशन टू हेल्प अस इट वोट है and even if it happens good for us but perhaps our preparation for for creating the right kind of understanding because ye hamara shayad nizam aisa hai mulk ali ek overall human nizam aisa hai ke takleefe gareeb mulkon aur gareeb logon pe zyada aate hain to aap you know whether they will generate this carbon footprint whether the other countries will do industrial development and therefore when people tell me that why are you working on coal projects as opposed to more on it because i understand ki jitne mulkon mein asood ki aayi hai wo coal projects ke nateeje mein aayi so jab hum bhi asood ki aa jayegi to hum bhi behtar baatein karne lag jayenge jo ke best hame samjhane ki koshish karte they want us to be like us but we have our own challenges if they are they are willing to come and live the way that we are living in the in the kind of political and and the kind of other challenges that we have तो फिर तो फब है लेकिन अगर नहीं है तो फिर ग्लोबल पीस ग्लोबल जस्टिस इट इट डजेंट मैटर बिकॉज इफ इट इट हैड मैटर दिस दिस वर्ल्ड हैज अ हिस्ट्री ऑफ ओवर टेन थाउजेंड ईयर इज इट अच्छा बट एक चीज बहुत अच्छी हुई है एंड दैट इज वॉट वी शुड लुक एट ग्लोबलाइजेशन हैज एक्चुअली हेल्प नेशन एज बिंग एज चाइना विद ओवर वन पॉइंट फोर बिलियन पॉपुलेशन to come out of poverty trap in three decades only so that gives us a reason and a mechanism to follow in our own indigenous way and in our own and with our own indigenous resources and human resource to in 30 years time we can become a rich country or jab aap ameer ho jayenge to fir aap dekhenge kaise aapke piche aate hain aur aapki baatein sunte hain so you have to be among the top 10 or maybe top 20 countries to actually make sure and the path to that is prosperity and sustainability exactly yeah uh, i think you have raised a very important issue so very quickly and you have raised a very important issue in coming here you will do but that is the kind of a tax without representation so if you look at the pop or the six and pop or the seven so probably we are looking forward to that kind of arrangement that somehow take care of uh, that kind of this is the reality is the climate is uh, bad for everyone and everyone has to do it as per their own perspective and state thank you sir we need to ask for help sir assalam alaikum uh i am sorry that i am getting a negative in the feedback in the group so so my qualification is again in agriculture and not only in agriculture but i am also very very good from the land and and the reading the syllabus and but but my basis on this uh, guys and boys guys and boys boys and girls love to to say something to my uh, belief so yes there is a lot of ideas that we discuss and share just i i i see uh, the mood of this management the what i have seen in my career since last 16 years when we talk about the business strategy the, the business is more concerned about the return on invest on their their own return on investment rather the return on investment of the farmers so if you see the roi of the farmer is less than the roi of the company so how is it is that is unsustainable it means we are actually creating in the current scenario we are just fighting and creating a balance between unsustainable and sustainable so because in the recent year the recent challenges in the economic and political crisis rather than the climate so we cannot say that everything is sustainable right now so we have to see the way how we how we are dealing with the with the unsustainable situation so when we talk about the business strategy my question is how to create a balance because if we start right now on the localization because we were more dependent on import and now we say that the time where we have to see on what on the localization we have to start with zero if you start investing the business start investing You need some infrastructure. You need some uh, uh, capital. You need some uh, uh, investments here, and, and your, your investors are not trusting you. And definitely, uh, you have to invest on the local community. You have to invest on the local. So, so we need to educate the students, and we need to be aware of the students. We need to come 
to meet the industries, visit us, sit with us, so that we can do a value mapping. We, not, we, we should not limit us to the cost mapping, we have to see what are the profit mapping actually at every level, so that we can, we can see to work on the, on the volume metrics, uh, 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 to increase the volume rather to increase the profit, so that ultimately the business should flourish in, in the current uh, situation. Thank you. Responsibility of that particular organization. 
आई हैव अ क्वेश्चन फॉर यू आप मुझे बताएं कि जब से फर्स्ट इंडस्ट्रियल रेवोल्यूशन शुरू हुआ है वो कब जमाना था जब एग्रीकल्चर वालों की वेजेस ज़्यादा थी फ्रॉम इंडस्ट्री कभी ऐसा हुआ है तो हम क्या किधर हम सैनर्जी क्रिएट करें देखें जो रूरल सेंटर्स के लोग होते हैं जो रूरल रूरल ह्यूमन रिसोर्स होती है वो बहुत अच्छी रिसोर्स होती है फॉर और जब से मॉडर्न अर्बनाइजेशन शुरू हुई है उनकी डेवलपमेंट के अंदर लेबर कहाँ से आती है गांव से ही आती है ना सिर्फ शहरों की तो लेबर इतनी महंगी होती है सो वी शुड बी केयरफुल वॉट वी विश फॉर ऑल्सो और अगर आपकी लेबर महंगी होगी रूरल के अंदर इक्वल होगी एज अर्बन सेंटर्स आप सोचें कि आपकी एग्रीकल्चर कॉस्ट किधर चली जाएगी तो आपकी एग्रीकल्चर सस्ती होगी तो आपका धनिया प्याज सस्ता होगा ना मतलब आपकी लेबर कॉस्ट इज इज योर बिगेस्ट कंपेटिटिव एडवांटेज दैट यू हैव डोंट टेक दैट अवे फ्रॉम 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 अस और एज टू द क्वेश्चन और ऑफ ऑफ साहब आई जस्ट वॉन्ट टू से जो डायनामिक्स है ना द वे दैट मैनेजमेंट साइंस और मैनेजमेंट स्टडीज के प्रोफेसर्स प्रैक्टिशर्स काम करते हैं और आई आर के प्रैक्टिशर्स और प्रोफेसर्स काम करते हैं वो डिफरेंट होते हैं हम बिल्कुल एक हम हर चीज़ के अंदर अपॉर्चुनिटी ढूंढने की कोशिश करते हैं दिस इज़ आर सेल्फिश वे ऑफ वर्किंग हम हर जगह से पैसा बनाने की कोशिश करते हैं आर सेल्फिश वे ऑफ वर्किंग विच इज़ राइट और रॉन्ग यू कैन हैव आर डिबल बिकॉज घर में पासूद की होगी तो हम बाहर जाके सस्टेनेबिलिटी की बात करें सो दैट्स माई हमारा माइंड सेट जरा डिफरेंटली काम करता है बट शी इज राइट वट शी से for being in urdu all the time you know why i hope i was able to no, 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 no. i understand enough so what was i making sir yes so i can see half the for one of the days Thank you, Mr. Prime Minister, for the speech. Thank you for the participation of the leader. So, Mr. Anjali.